everywhere across this auditorium. Those online connect with us as we worship. Lord, we bless you. Just lift your voice and tell him yes, 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 yes. No argument. Yes. Do it your way. Your way is the best. Do it your way. Do it your way. Do it your way. Yes to your will. Yes to your ways. Oh, oh yes, Lord. I will always. And as a family of faith that we not only love you we not only believe in you we respect you we really do Lord we align to your will this is why we're here every time your will will always prevail Lord we declare that you will help us see the excellency of an aligned destiny that you will help us to understand how helpless we are in rebellion. That you will help us to understand that only as we come into alignment with your will would we ever prevail. Tonight we have come, O oh God, and we ask that you grant us wisdom. We have come as a sign of humility, admitting that there are things we do not know. We have come as a sign of humility expressing our desperation for your wisdom. Lift your voice in one minute and cry out for the wisdom of God. Lord, I know if your wisdom works in my life, I will be better than this. I humble myself. I cry for your wisdom. Cry for your wisdom. When your wisdom comes upon my finances, it will be better than this. When your wisdom comes upon my destiny. When the spirit takes over your soul. When the spirit takes over your life. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome.
life. And we ask you tonight to feed our hungry hearts, feed our souls, give us light, give us strength, give us illumination. We believe in you, we are believers in this place. You have gathered your people tonight to bless them. And Lord, we declare that we will truly be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please greet someone by your left and right. And please you may be seated. Especially welcome all those following us online. There are a little over a hundred thousand people following us from around the world. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you for connecting with us in the name of Jesus Christ. For those of us who are here inside and outside, the Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. It's a privilege to be here again bringing God's word. Amen. Tonight my heart is indicting a good matter. The Bible says, Yea, I speak of excellent things. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. My heart has been burning to share the things that I'm about to share. And um, the Lord placed it so strong in my spirit. And I believe that tonight's teaching will be the answer to someone's prayer. Amen. You don't have to know what it is. Believe me. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word of God comes to change our lives. We have cultivated a culture of receiving the word of God with gratitude and allowing it, allowing it to change us. Those who argue with the word of God are those who fail in life. Praise the word. The Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It never said in your life, it is settled in heaven. That's why heaven is the way it is. When you now allow his will to be done in your life, the same way it is in the heavens, then the word will be settled in your life. When the word of God is settled in your life, your life will change like day and night. I keep telling us week after week that we are on a project. God is taking us somewhere. Hallelujah. Many years from now, you will turn back and you will thank me. You will say thank you for having this. Those who think we are wasting our time trusting God are in for a shock. Because the Bible says darkness shall cover the earth. It's a prophecy. It's not a discussion. And cross darkness the people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, tonight's teaching is a response. First an instruction from God, but then a response to um, quite a number of things that, um, or a number of issues that I've seen with people, families, individuals. You know, God has given me the privilege of talking and counseling people an average day is a very busy day for me because you have different things to respond to ranging from financial issues, marital issues destiny issues, career issues health issues, demonic oppression and um, it gives me a privilege as I talk to people every time because it's an opportunity to learn and see first hand the practicality of God's word. I have families to comfort them over bereavement and at the same time you are celebrating the birth of someone new. Are we together now? You are watching how disobedience is punishing another and you are celebrating the joy of obedience. So you are in between um, experiencing the revelation and the reality of the word of God and seeing the grave consequences that comes when we define our own idea about life. I choose to submit to the ways of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I've had a lot of issues and um, the Lord just gave me a release to really, really discuss it tonight. Please, I want everybody, open your eyes, your spirit. Everyone will be blessed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. There are two issues I want to start with. Really, I, I, I just um, felt like starting out... Um, you can call it the part A 
on a little note since um, Valentine is on <laughs> Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday. I just thought to start from that angle and then just to contribute something. Not necessarily out of pressure, but I think that is useful. I'm a visionary leader by the grace of God and it's important to respond to people according to seasons. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart and they shall feed you with wisdom and understanding. Hallelujah. There, there is, I have seen two evils that I believe, if not corrected, will destroy a lot of people. Just as an introduction, that's not necessarily where I'm dwelling, but just to connect with it. There, there is a growing fear that I've seen, especially among ladies, not necessarily koinonia ladies. Um, as I talk with ladies, as I talk with women, I, I'm a bit concerned at the growing fear as it regards family life most especially the fear of disappointment the fear of expectations not coming to pass and then on the other side of the pendulum I have seen a growing sense of frustration among men especially young men are we together now so there is on one side fear the fear that many ladies may never enter into their desired destinies. Fears ranging from the, the projections of late marriage, fear ranging from not finding a man that represents God, God's ideal standard. So there's, there's a lot of fear. It's like the average lady is afraid. Even those who are married are afraid. So it's a very interesting situation. Then on the other hand, you have men who are frustrated. I have seen brothers, some in Koinonia and some around that have been able to see. You know, there's something frustrating when you've done your best and it still doesn't work. You know that state. There are people who are standing and saying, look, I don't know what the key is, but I have to find this thing. It's not working. So I see a lot of frustrated people. People call me, Apostle, do you know my wife just gave birth? And let me confess, things are bad, bad. Nigeria is bad. My life is bad. My boss is bad. And I just cried before God and I thought that it was very important to respond to this. There are so many people who are afraid of getting into relationships, afraid of getting married. So much. And so God will help us in the name of Jesus. Ladies, I want to talk to you first. Pay very close attention. I really want to talk to you from the depth of my heart. If anyone is distracting you this night, just know that that person is really an enemy of your destiny. There is a reality we have to come to terms with. Look at me, please. And I'm very serious. I know there will be a lot of laughing, but just laugh and let your spirit be here. Praise God. The 21st century living, please pay attention, living in the 21st century alone is a challenge all by itself. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Just being alive. I know that we have taught and people have said it that we are the most fortunate generation. I believe that. But at the same time, there has been no time in human history, I tell you, where living has come with circles of challenges like our generation. Just being alive alone is a challenge by default. Are we together now? This is very, very important. And that means there must be an updated redefinition of concepts, listen to me, ideas, redefinition of paradigms and strategies as regards living as regards family life, not necessarily a veering off of God's standard, but a redefinition of our approach. Are you getting what I'm saying now? 
what you call a man in the 21st century is very different from what was understood by a man in 1960s and 70s is that correct yeah so if we do not adjust to these redefinitions of concepts and ideas to be able to stand the times that are coming there will be big disasters in christian homes although born again although tongue talking and many lives we are going to raise all kinds of children who will be hooligans and a nuisance to society i have observed personally now and if there are we, we have a number of children here some very small some maybe in their teenage but i have observed with shock most young people from within the ages of let's say 19 down to 13 that generation has been violently captured by the devil that 19 to 13 i don't know what happened to that generation of young people but there is a disaster they are they are outspoken rebellion against the things of god is beginning to reproduce the pattern of the american church are we together yeah you study children most of them are just finishing from secondary school and maybe universities and all of that they are outspoken rebellion against the life of god the ways of god they are really the technological generation that that teenage and if there is no redefinition of concepts and ideas there will be a very serious challenge the average christian parent does not even know how the concept of parenting because it has changed back in the olden days the parents were the principal instructors of a child but right now the average child has many teachers are we together the school teachers are just one the parents are even the least there are many other things there's facebook to teach there's youtube to teach are we together gone are the days where you can you can off a television and say sit down and read your book you off a television he switches it on on his device think about that the advancement in technology is a double-edged sword it's made certain destinies and created potentials for the destruction of others so i i really would want to talk to us um ladies let me start with you there are certain things sisters i love you and i'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart if you listen to me you will be saved if you are stubborn and you don't listen i guarantee you you would have defined a path that will lead to tears are we together now say amen sisters here doesn't mean people who maybe ladies who are not yet married it, just anybody really there are certain things a lady must find in a man otherwise don't marry him write it down i've upgraded my curriculum on this you will you will be interested to hear the things i'm going to tell you now a thorough upgrade just four things i've summarized every cry of every sister to four things whether you know it or not just believe me any brother that does not come along these lines is dangerous sisters what did i say he is shout it i didn't say he's bad i said he's dangerous i don't care whether the brother is joshua selman i don't care whether the brother has a bible on top of his head if these four things are not in place your home will be a disaster and your children will be a disaster ready number one you have no business talking about relationship and marriage with any man who is not god fearing don't be too fast allow me to properly define what i mean by god fearing notice i didn't say born again because that thing has been abused in the 21st century a born again brother is not one who came out for altar call and you witnessed him raising his hand that's not born again god fearing the primary reason why society is in decadence listen to me is because the men are not god fearing the fear of the lord is not believing in god there are two different things faith in god and the fear of god are two different things i can have faith in god and not fear god are we together now yeah 
There are many faith-filled Christians who are not God-fearing. And listen, look at this. I am a Christian. I am a child of God. My life is governed by a reference. Listen, the Bible is my reference. Are we together now? My decisions are made with respect to this reference. So, when you tell me you are a husband, what reference are you leading your life and your family with? So many people come to church, but there is no reference upon which their lives, their ideologies, and their decisions come from. So, they just hilariously come up with concepts and ideas about parenting, and they have destroyed the lives of innocent women. There are many women in the last two weeks. The number of married women I've had to counsel and the pain that the average married woman, woman goes through in their home is unbearable. They laugh in the open but they are dying in the secret. And the sad thing is that most of the men are born again. Some are even bishops, priests, sincere people deacons what does it mean to be God fearing to be God fearing number one means to have reverence respect for God not just to believe in God but to have reverence for God let's hurry up number two to be God fearing means to submit to the ways of God Submit to the word of God as the final authority in all matters. Write this one down. To submit to the word of God as the final authority in all matters. Not some matters. You, so you don't mix the word of God and culture. In our place, this is how we do it. No. No. In our village, this is how it is done. This, this diversity of concepts has largely destroyed many good men. Turned them into beasts and animals because there is no centralized scripture-based reference upon which their activities are carried out. Listen, let me tell you something. There is no man that is bad when they tell you a man is bad when a woman looks at her husband when a young lady looks at someone she's in a relationship with and says you are bad there is, the concept of bad does not exist there is no man who is bad every man is like a video playing out his mindset it is the thinking the ideology of a man that expresses him as bad that is why an umbrella can carry the same body and in two years, the armed robber has become a pastor. The body did not change. Something changed. The same hand that once held a gun and was brutal over people now holds a Bible and is saving sinners. There is nothing called a bad man. I've interacted with some people who are supposedly bad, some of them old enough to be my parents, and I've discovered that intrinsically, every man is good. Their approach was wrong. And so their life became a script playing out. Some of you are looking at me now, brothers, as sincere as you are, you are about to replay the same script if you don't change. You will be shocked to see how you will find out that what you desire, let me tell you, there is no bad man who married his wife to destroy her. Are you hearing me? Nobody, I'm a man, I've been a man all my life. I'm not just being a man now. So you have to listen to me. I know exactly Men are not bad people. But there are concepts that have turned men into beasts. Are we together? A God-fearing person. The word of God. I always give this analogy when I'm counseling people. Listen. If, wife, come. If, watch this. This is my wife. And I want the television to be here. Everybody look up. This is a television now. I want the TV to be here. And my wife says, my husband, this TV has to be there. There is a conflict of ideas. Now, to be God-fearing means both of us must have the unashamedness, or at least I, 
to say what does the word of God say about TV is the word of God says there should be no TV what happens to my will I fold my will to let the will of God prevail there is no family that will suffer when the man can accept the will of God the problem is usually the will of the man and I look at her and say what part of your dowry didn't I pay you talk to me I will slap you forget that I'm a man of God I'm a man it's just that I'm of God you talk to me I will slap you are we together and you know men we are very arrogant people we can be entering hellfire and claim that is AC we are, and drag people in trouble until we get in there and then we say well I, I did not exactly understand the configuration of a man is such that we have a lot to protect that's why submitting to the ways of God is very hard that's why in most crusades women are more the men don't come they would rather watch from the television and kneel down and receive the same miracle but to come and be healed they feel is an insult i am a director of a and b and c but tonight i pray that god will raise men who can submit i love the song the worship team sang look there is nothing as excellent as a man especially a young man who has submitted to the will of god in every matter it doesn't matter how it stings my ego once the word of god contradicts my concept i bend i don't look for an explanation no sir it is being god fearing that will make you never to carry your hand and beat your wife you are angry but what did the bible say about wives it said treat them as unto weaker vessels so when you slap your wife and you are boiling you are not just a stupid man you are not submitting to the ways of God when you love your wife just because she made a nice hair and say hey, hey, now you are talking you are you are carnal number one that is not even true love because the Bible says husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church so the thing is to study how Christ loved the church he said while we were yet sinners undeserving unqualified in due season Christ loved us so when a man has to punish his wife to end his love by dressing well i'm not against good dressing i'm not against looking well i'm not against all of these things but if you force your your wife to have to succumb to those things the day she sees another woman who has those things much more than her she becomes insecure because she knows how unpredictable your love is the fear of the lord thank you my dear many men do not fear god principles of parenting do you know that there are families and there are cultures for instance that teach that a man can beat his wife at least once or twice so that when he beats her she will know that this is not a stupid is not a cc i mean it's it's a show of masculinity i senior you in age in strength in whatever it is in salary and you joke with me i beat you once then i ask you for forgiveness i'm forgiving you you are forgiving me but the memory of what happened will keep you in place that has worked for a lot of people but i hate it not i don't care whether it works or not it's not consistent with the word of god the word of god is not about what works or not it's about what god says if i apply the word of god and it does not work i will still remain there not because of the result it produces but because that's what came out of the mouth of god that's what it means to be an ardent follower of the word sisters are you listening unfortunately now we we live in a generation where and please don't don't find this insulting many of our sisters some of you are here looking at me now you are so gullible just anybody just comes wherever he has small money small whatever you are praying in tongues yet you are not allowing what you are praying to inform the decisions i am shocked when some ladies bring some brothers to me and say i like him i want to say where did you keep your brain i taught you so many things look at the kind of person you are dragging completely antichrist in his approach why do you love him he loves me is he a christian i uh, he's a nice he comes around listen let me tell you something another wife uh, well just for this example you are not permitted to marry another wife listen watch this everyone 
do you know the only thing you cannot change in your life is God and your wife and children you are supposed to change your cloth after some time you are permitted as lovely as this cloth I'm wearing is after a few months it will fade and I'll throw it away and sew another one so it's amazing how you can love something now and hate it but the Bible says you are staying with that woman so there's no you can't change her like a cloth meaning you must find out from God what he must put in you and her to make her remain fresh if you change clothes change phone change car and yet the Bible says you cannot change your wife you must find out Lord and the woman is growing old so it means you must do something to me that is beyond the physical to keep me faithful I told you tonight my heart is, is indicting a good matter we are just warming the plane. We must reach that altitude this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. God fearing. Sisters, I want you to burn this revelation. The first thing to look at in a man is not the car he brought. Hello? Say hi. Hello? Because some of you, if we don't press you like this, you know, I've discovered in church that many people don't listen. As you are talking like this, they are looking at you. They are even writing. But their hearts are already made up. No, sir. I'm saving you trouble. You will thank me for it. Not everything that glitters is gold. And don't let anyone pressure you, whether parents or friends, and say, after all, what is there? He can take care of us. What is your idea of care? buy you things are we together a god fearing man a man he doesn't have to be a pastor uh -uh. god fearing has nothing to do with a pastor god fearing has nothing to do with praying eight hours a man can pray eight hours and not be god fearing i told you there is a difference between believing god and having a reverence for god are you hearing what i'm saying now hmm. The fear of God. Submitting to the authority of the word. Submitting to the authority of the word. So you may be Igbo. You may be Hausa. You may be Yoruba. You may be Kaduna State. Whatever. Northern and You may be from another nation of the world. It does not matter. The issue of this is how we do it in our place. This is how it is in our place. Our fathers used to, our this used to happen. No, no, no. People do those kinds of nonsense things. Do you know how this refusal to conform to the word of God has brought trouble between people? It's the reason why many marriages are not working. Parenting. So the man has his idea on how to raise children. He got it from his friends. He got it from bad people. Are we together now? Do you know the average young child was not really trained by his parents? He just lived with them. It's one thing to live with me, but it's another thing to be mentored and trained by me. That you are going around in my house does not mean I'm training you. The Bible said train up a child. It didn't say live with him. Many people are living with their children, but they are not training their children. So their children get the training from their friends. Bad books, bad magazines, rubbish films nonsense photos and pictures and by the time that child is 10 or 11 years somebody else is training him how does a train move they are connected the train will not move against where the head of the train is moving so train a child means set the pace don't tell them to do it lead them in doing it you don't ask a child to buy you cigarettes and then as he drops, he says, if I catch you with cigarette, I will kill you by myself. I've told you. Smoking is very bad. Forget that I'm doing it. You are not training the child. Is God speaking to us? What I'm saying is a very serious thing. God fearing. Number two, ladies. The second thing that you must, in this order, in this order, it has to be in this order. The second thing is that that man must submit to an earthly authority. I'm giving you redefined 21st century world compliant. He must be able to submit to an earthly authority for mentorship, 
for building for correction there are many families in trouble today because there is no authority figure over the life of the husband there's no man that can call him and say no no what you are doing is wrong he can beat the wife and almost kill her he's the god of himself never marry a man who does not have a pastor a mentor a spiritual authority an elderly person there must be a personality that he has covenanted to listen to the person say amen, amen. very powerful revelation i give you there are many ladies who say ah you're in a relationship i think you should see apostle say, I will see apostle for what 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 should i see him for that's how after he slaps you and you say let's go and see apostle you say for what listen no matter how wrong a man and a woman is if there is someone for them to listen you are still safe you are still safe i've had the privilege of talking with a lot of couples i remember one couple they fought in kaduna it was a brutal fight police had to come police for husband and wife and to, and, and they are christians the woman just took she could not take it that day and she decided that look i will try my best whatever i would i have to attempt this man today true story and two of them after the door settled the police people told them look you are married people don't make a fool out of yourself go and you can you know know how to fix things up two of them agreed that they were going to report themselves to me so they reported themselves and then they came for counseling do you know at the end of that counseling simply because they were people who understood submission at the end of it the man was hugging his wife as if he never slapped her nice people and as far as i know things are working it was a very minor issue and all of that sisters please hear me in the name of jesus the 21st century has changed things some of us this is the dilemma that our fathers came in they had been beating our mothers for many years there are some of us if there was an authority figure the divorce would not have happened there was no one the man decides he's the god of the family the day he decides to descend upon the family with wrath everybody's in trouble sisters the man must be able to show you clearly what authority figure is in his life do you know why let me tell you this emeka come sweetheart come assuming stand here assuming this lady emeka comes to ask this lady out and says he wants to marry her do you know if she tells him and says okay whatever it is this is an authority figure in my life and i would like you to see him do you know why the man will run away because he doesn't plan to be faithful and he doesn't want anything that will tie him too much he wants an opportunity to still be doing runs at the side hello are we together so he's hoping that by alienating himself there are many brothers who claim to love you people they come and drop you for koinonia and go away and after the grace they now come and pick you that's dangerous naomi told ruth he said um, um ruth told naomi he says my god will be your god your people will be my people are we together because if i know this guy with this lady tomorrow if i see her smiling at somebody i have a right to ask a question and say ah i hope that guy is your brother <laughs> that smile is too generous for just an ordinary this thing so what is the issue and if there is an issue i will at least try to find out it's all right if the issues are irreconcilable but at least that there is some level there is disorder in the body of christ because everybody is doing anything that's why you can find one brother with 20 girlfriends scattered all around and they never know themselves yet the brother can be leading worship yet the brother can be a pastor in charge of a and b and c you will tell this one i'm mad just be waiting you will just let me just put things in place while he's doing that he's already printing um, traditional wedding card how many ladies have been heartbroken a brother that has told them he has even met their parents while they are happy the next thing they just see a wedding card this is to notify you that the family of a and b is marrying c and d in in different places very careless and we make the church look stupid let me tell you there's order in the body of christ many people will hear what i'm saying and think no disorderliness will always empower satan 
disorderliness of any sort will always empower Satan. The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. Bless you. Bless you. Number three, very quickly. Are you getting blessed? So sisters, the first thing you should look at in a man, and if you are married and your husband doesn't have this, begin to labor in the place of prayer. Labor generously in the place of prayer. Lord, turn the heart of this man. He must be God-fearing. I've married, the deed has been done. But Lord, you can still step in. You are the God of the second chance. Step in. I will never allow my daughter to marry anybody that is not God-fearing. Bring a jeep, bring a plane, carry hamper for me. That, that, all that one is your cup of tea. If you are not God-fearing, the first question I'll ask you is not what you studied or where you have a job. Are you right with God? And you know that you will not just tell me yes. I'll say, that's all right. Let's go to the next question. No, 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 no. We'll stay there and press it. Right with God means what? You don't just say, I'm right with God. Are, are you a member of what? I'm a member of living faith. Okay, that's all right. No, no. I can, in five minutes through your words, I can know you are just a church goer. You don't fear God. Yeah. Let's restore the fear of God so that our children will be raised. You send children to school. You have finished training your children in the fear of God. They now go and meet a very indisciplined child who came from a family that does not fear God and start making your child who fears God feel like an inferior person. Is that not what happened to some of us growing? You left good Christian families. The day they were talking about pornographic movies, you've never known anything like that. And you say, I don't know anything. They say, are you joking? You have 14 years. You've never watched this. And they make you feel guilty for loving God. And it's that guilt that drives you to say, no, I have to educate my mind. And look at what has happened to your life now. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, through the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Be determined to correct the mistakes of your parents with your life. You have insulted your father. You have insulted your mother. It's now your chance. Oh, apostle, I want to marry this year. Congratulations. But you listen carefully. Do you know some people, if not for this teaching, you are about to make a blunder this Valentine. Because they always come around this time. Wolves in sheep's clothing. They stroll around and they come and look for good church ladies. Well-cultured Christian girls who they can play with their mind because of the innocence of the word. There are many ladies, if it's not a church girl, her eye has opened. When the guy does nonsense, she will jack him and say, we'll die here. I'm not a stupid person. I will show you that although I'm a lady. But a nice, well-cultured church girl has been trained to respect men. Has been trained to behave well. Many bad boys like church girls because they avoid trouble. They, they, the pastor has done the work. So I can easily manipulate them into nonsense. And the guy will use the scripture and say, don't shout at me. Remember what apostle said. He said, it's true. Apostle said we should be nice. They always look for these periods and come and destroy the life of ladies. It pains me when I see very nice ladies and their entire life has been crushed and crumbled by very bad boys because they are sincere. They are innocent. And you know why? We pastors don't teach it because we think it's not necessary. So we allow people to make all their mistakes and destroy their lives and destinies. I get text messages literally every day. One trouble after another in a family. Please ladies, listen to me very carefully. God fearing, submission to an earthly authority. I have seen how beautiful many homes have become. Not necessarily because the men are so godly, but the power of submission. The Lord has revealed things to me about certain families and I've called the husbands to say, Husband, would you want to adjust A and B and C? I think you are doing this to your wife. I think you are doing this to your children. Oh, apostle, I didn't know it was this way. All right. Direction. Number three. Sister, you are praying or considering a man to marry or you are married. That man must have passion for you, not love. Passion. 
Passion is an adjective that qualifies the extent of love. I love you is not a language that is useful again in this generation because it has been abused. Are you, are you get what I'm saying? One tout can be somewhere holding his ego and as you are passing, he says, sister, I love you. So, people don't even know what I love you means again. I love you means something carnal and fleshly. Passion. Please look at me. Let me tell you. Any man who does not have passion for you will be unfaithful. Write it down. Write it down and put my name under. Don't, don't post anything and put my name, but write it down for your consumption. Any man with no passion for his wife, I give you an ironclad guarantee he will be unfaithful. It's not if, it's when. Do you know, let me tell you a shocking truth. Do you know that over 75 to 80 percent of men, even in Christian families, married men, within the first five years of their marriage have been unfaithful to their wives statistically confirmed i told you it's not because they are bad passion it is passion passion is more than physical stature and, and what and all of these things are we together now yeah so that's why i hate arranging marriage i'm saying it again you know it i've told you a marriage that from nowhere you are just standing and they come and say here is the lady it's okay you can suggest you can recommend and people can pray but where you just ag agree and the day the person is appearing is the day a ring is entering your hand <laughs> you are in big 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 trouble because the man is only marrying a wife not a friend it is a friend that stick it closer than a brother any marriage where there is no passion there must be unfaithfulness it's not there will be there must be unfaithfulness a man cannot struggle indefinitely contemplating his love for his wife he will find an alternative and what a generation with many alternatives his secretary is there if she's not there the other one is there if she's not around, another devil is there somewhere in the hotel. If she's not there, a, a receptionist of another place is somewhere. At every given point, there is somebody waiting to destroy your husband. There are certain women, there are spirits that walk in them, only married men. If they see a young man, no matter what you have, it's not their business. But once they see you, you are married. Ah, what a joy. If you complain about your wife, say, ah, what kind of a woman will oppress such a nice man as this? That's right. He's starting. He's starting. That's exactly what the man wants to hear. I'm very serious with what I'm sharing tonight. Passion. When two people come, you know, to introduce themselves, they just come. You see, sometimes they hold hands. It's as if, hey, hey, hey let's marry you. I tell them, oh God, just calm down. Because these motions are not passion. Passion is not the, the physical exertion. You are all around the lady. That's not passion. Sometimes it's just jealousy and your personality. It's not passion. Passion is the depth of resolve. It's a resolve within you. That through that lady you have gotten satisfaction and fulfillment. No need for another. The Bible puts it excellently. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them. A man who cannot say that to his wife is already a dangerous man. It is true. I know that you may not be the most beautiful lady. Let's tell the truth. I've seen this lady. I know she's beautiful, but you are my wife. You occupy a place that you alone can stay. May God raise men who can speak like that. Not that a beautiful lady passes and even the wife is now afraid because she knows who she married. She just says, honey, must we stand outside? Let's go inside. She, she has already known. The man said, no, no, no. I have to take fresh air. What is all this? Vulnerability. See, let me tell you something. Let me tell you a big secret. There are four sets of people if you are marrying, you have to listen to this thing two times. One, if you are marrying a man of God, we are exposed to people every day. People means options. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number two, a high profile businessman. Number three, a politician. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Number four, a lecturer. Anybody in the academia. If you are married to any of these four people, listen with both ears and add your spirit in it because he is exposed. 
As I'm standing here preaching, there are all kinds of pretty ladies. You are not seeing me, but I'm seeing you. Are we together? Say amen. Amen. So, when you are not careful, you will be surprised that your husband has four children. You never knew. One day, somebody just knocks your house and says, I must look for my father. Say, what is going on here? Spiritual father. And you see a carbon copy of your child. Look, look, look. Don't think I'm just talking. There are many children scattered around. They belong to your family. It's just that you don't know. The day Jesus will come. Let's just leave him to be the judge. Amen. Please let me have our attention. Very serious issues. Have you not seen families? Some of you come from those families. After 20 years, one day they'll call a meeting. And say, honestly, there are, there are so many there are complications around. You don't know who is your real mother. You don't know who is your real father. You really don't know how many you are in your family. You just know what they told you. As you grow, you keep learning more. You thought you were seven. Now you have discovered you are ten. And eventually, the children will say they are coming. When the father now dies, that's when you will know there is trouble. Because the family with the legitimate wife are all girls. And the ones they gave birth to somewhere are boys. The moment the father dies, they now show up and say, no way, our father is our father. And in our culture, women don't inherit anything. Therefore, they displace people. I've counseled cases like that. Are we together? Very important. Passion. Please, my brother, if you find out it is okay, listen, it is very okay to see a lady and just be fond of her. The mystery of attraction is when you find a lady or a person or an object demonstrating many things you perceive to represent value to you. So if beauty represents value, it's impossible to see a pretty girl and pretend it's not being spiritual. Look, look very well. This ask you why I say because I'm a Christian. You are not lying. So looking, it's not all those fake things to pretend you a pretty lady passes there. Yeah, I didn't see any. No, you saw. You saw. It's just that you have self-control. Are we together? Passion. You must have passion. You must have passion. Many people don't have passion. The lifespan of their passion is a few weeks after marriage. The lifespan of their passion is when they say, I do. Some, the lifespan of their passion is when she gives them three children and four children. That was his goal, to have children. They've been pressuring you. Promise, you are getting old. No marriage. Marry. I need three children. Fine. That's the premise of the marriage. So you married an object that produces children. The moment she produces the children, the goal has been achieved. So there is nothing else. Do you know how many women, brothers and sisters, some of you parents, some of you sadly, you are the ones yourself in that kind of shoes. Do you know how many women move like strangers before their husband? And sometimes they almost wonder and say, you mean this man once asked me out. He once stood in the cold waiting for me to come. Look at how some of our fathers treat our mothers. It's a mess. And they have mentored us to do the same. If God does not intercept, believe me, you will reproduce the same result. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them all. There is an appetite for discontentment in the body of Christ. Brothers, let me encourage you. Please be careful. And, and, and sisters too, I've not come to brothers yet. I'm talking about sisters. But it's a quality for brothers. Passion whenever you see that you are attracted to a lady it's not enough reason to go and ask them out that's lack of self-control are we together it is okay that i look at this lady and i'm attracted to her it's okay but self-control that's what they say in the multitude of many counsel there is safety some the moment you see a lady and she's fine day and then even if it's during a prayer session in the heat of prayer Say, please, can you see me after, after prayer? (laughs) 
discipline. Hallelujah. The next moment, that's your first time. You are even new in the prayer. They have not even confirmed you. You are not a member of the prayer department. You are just arriving that day. You say, sister, honestly, where, where do your parents stay? Let me tell you what you have just revealed about yourself. You are a very indisciplined brother. Because you come into a place with structure and authority. And you just come in and do anything you want to do. And sometimes the ladies are foolish enough to play along those kind of things. Discipline. Let people come and meet order in your life. Then they are forced to respect that order. Are we together now? Jesus is helping us today. Somebody, somebody is really getting blessed from what I'm saying. It's very important. Are we together now? Passion. If you are married here, you must pray consistently, brothers, fathers, to keep having passion for your wife, not just your children. Because gone are the days when ladies will respect a man just when he's married. And you can see and say, ah, Jimmy is married, let's leave him. No. No. You can see somebody as old as my father and still come and meet me. Like, daddy, how are you? That daddy is, 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 just means I'm available. Gone are the days. You can see a man at my father's age, see a small girl, and say, ah, my daughter, how are you? You, you would think he's fatherly, my daughter, but he's, he's, he's not fatherly, my daughter at all. It's another dimension on his own. So that you are married. You know, sometimes many men deceive themselves. They just think the moment you are married, it just means people will leave you alone just because you are married. No. Our society, it should be like that. But our society has become so depraved that a ring is just a jewelry. A ring is just a jewelry for entertainment. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's something that symbolizes a covenant relationship is it's entertainment. So when you wear a ring and say, if they see a ring, they'll mind themselves. It's a joke. It's a big joke. Where to? It won't change anything. Thank you, my dear. Love and passion. love and passion and then the last key ladies I will dwell a bit here today never marry a man who is irresponsible that's the last point there must be a demonstration of responsibility 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 many brothers are irresponsible Christian brothers inclusive, irresponsible, tongue-talking Christian brothers. What does it mean to be responsible? To be responsible means, it means to be aware of the cost dimension of life. Taking cognizance of the cost dimension of life. I don't mean money. That anything to be done must be done by someone. The Bible says every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all. An irresponsible person says, uh uh, they have not done it. A responsible person says, Can we do it? Are you seeing that now? Let me tell you something. Please look up. There is a tragedy that has happened in Nigeria, especially to Nigerian young men. Please listen. If you can hear what I'm saying, it will save you. Many gentlemen around the world have been victims of this. And some of them seated here looking at me. I want you to listen very carefully. Do you know many young men have been over pampered? And that's why they are irresponsible today. Over pampering does not mean they came from a rich family. A poor family can still over pamper a man. Let me tell you how they over pampered them. A young man is 18 years. The moment he's washing his clothes... You say, ah, is there not house help? Wash for him. Because we have washing machine in our house. A young man who is supposed to start learning to be responsible. Are we together now? He goes out and by four o'clock you are ringing his phone. Return home. Return home. It looks like you are trying to be disciplinary. There is an age range where he needs to be home. But there is an age range where that guy is submissive. Maybe he's in church as a choir director. And you are now calling a mature boy of 19 years old. It's 5 o'clock. Where are you? Come home. So the guy is now 25 and he stays home. He married with his wife and stays home. Just like mommy said. Obedient child. 
nobody goes out to get food again because he has been trained come home in america from 12 years 12 years old in america you see children looking for something to do post office ah there there's no chair for us they always expect to be recipients not contributors it's not your fault that's why i'm helping you tonight many brothers are like that they are born again they love god but anything that discomforts them a little uh -uh, they don't want it it's irresponsibility that produces laziness laziness get up and do something you have a meeting for five o'clock it's raining heavily i say kai oh quarter to five please uh, Benga, I can't make it for the meeting. I'm tired. This rain, the cold is too much. That's a lazy man who will not feed his family. You see that? He will not feed his family because he will say there's crisis in Nigeria. They can kill people if they go outside and he will leave his family members to die. The Bible says a lazy man will not sow because of the cold and he will also not reap. I am a fanatic of responsibility. Responsibility. You cannot be around me and not be a responsible person. Waiting for things to be done for you. No, sir. You must learn to be an initiator, not just a recipient. There are many men today, the salary comes from their wives. Correct? It's okay if there is a situation that happened in, in the course of the marriage and the woman has to be supporting. You see somebody from 1996, no job. It's the wife that works pays the children's school fees and the man is alive two hands two legs he gets up in the morning sits at the veranda of the house they are playing draft together with other colleagues irresponsible men who come they form a team and they just play where's your wife uh, you know she's a nurse she works in the hospital you know women she will come in the evening the woman will return there is no food she will come and be cooking and the, the male figure in that family is learning he doesn't like it but his ideology is being shaped after the example he's seeing there are too many irresponsible people. There are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the one to raise money for church. Have you seen people like that? There are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the ones to give them money. Am I not your pastor? Buy a car for me. Build a house for me. Marry for me. That's an irresponsible man of God. He's a man of God but an irresponsible one. Responsibility. So you must look at it responsibility is not having a car that's not responsibility responsibility is not having a house that's not responsibility that's the indices many ladies are using and you are already getting into a big mistake responsibility is not having a car and a house please listen i can have a car and a house by the privilege of access it doesn't mean i'm responsible so stop using a car and a house to prove that a man is responsible eventually it's an index that will show responsibility but responsibility is from the heart the willingness to grow to press the willingness to fulfill the cost dimension of life don't say there are two brothers one has a car the other one is walking on his foot and so I, let me just go with what i'm seeing now the moment the car spoils that's the last car he will ever buy in his life because he never bought the first one in the first place many ladies don't know how to trust god for good brothers we pray in tongues but we don't know what to expect and so i'm painting a picture for you right now somebody already after koinonia you answer the guy you see how god has given you the answer the answer is no the answer is no immediately after koinonia you send him a text say please sorry i've delayed you but the answer is no because you are not god fearing you don't submit to any authority and you don't want to he may not know but is he willing to now that he knows are we together now yeah number three do you love me passionately no you passworded your phone, passworded your text, passworded your laptop, passworded a call is coming. You just run outside. You save the name of a lady, John. You save the name of the other lady, Andrew. Because you turn the head of people to be stupid. Andrew, why are you calling me? It's a coded language. You are not serious. Hallelujah. And finally, the man is not responsible. The average African family has a, has a family to take care of. A nuclear family first. I hope you are aware. Brothers, are you aware? <laughs> Be aware now that 
the average African family, there is every likelihood your wife is not the last born. What does that mean to you? You are a direct contributor. You are going to contribute. There are families that they gave birth late. Praise God. So, one sister is ready for marriage. The other one is still in primary school. You are going to take care of them. It's not supposed to be so, but it's a reality you are bargained for. That's what saying I love you means. That's what saying I want to marry you means. She tells you I'm the firstborn. Out of how many? Seven. You said you still love her. What you are trying to say is, look, it's all right. We can find a way around it. Brothers, let me say your own quickly. Brothers, I can beg you in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. It's better to have a broken relationship, honorable. In fact, don't break relationships, end them. It's better to have an ended relationship than to have a scattered and pieces marriage. One, you can even thank you. What do you look for in a, a lady? God fearing too. You see that God fearing is the same for both male and female. God fearing, exact same definitions as with the man. Nothing changing, gender irrespective. The same God fearing. God fearing meaning you respect God. Many ladies don't respect God. Many ladies don't respect God. They respect themselves. They respect society. They respect every other thing but God. There are ladies who pride themselves in being bad girls, even if they are in church. They are happy when they look and say, you're a bad girl. They, they smile. That we go do. If you're a bad girl, it's a very bad, it's not a good comment. You know, many ladies feel guilty. Listen, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart. Many sisters, innocent church sisters, they feel guilty. Listen, they feel guilty for being innocent. You know, society makes it look like your eye has not opened. You've not been sleeping around. You've never drank in your life. Uh -uh. You don't have a boyfriend. You are 20 years. Uh -uh. You mean this is this? This is how your life is? And they make ladies feel guilty for being innocent. They look and say, she's a small girl. She's just growing old. Come to us. We, we, we have our legs. Are, you, see, you are happy for being bad. It's a different thing if it's your past. Jesus has helped you now. Or at least will help you this night. Are we together? God-fearing. A woman who is not God-fearing will have a husband and her sponsor. That's how she will marry. There is a husband and a sponsor. What is the sponsor for? Rainy days. What's the husband for? Every other thing. So once the going gets tough, she calls. Do you know how many women, married women, still call those who were their ex husband or ex-boyfriend or ex uh, sugar son or ex whatever it is and call the person after many years a woman with five children still calls one small boy somewhere how are you reporting her husband to the small boy and the small boy says how will we do now he says can we meet in so 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 club at the back of that tree just the, the way we used to meet before you are married the, the average lady still has affiliations with her past relationships even in her marital home i will say it oh my name is joshua selman the average lady still has affiliations i tell you this you know i'm not lying some of you as you are looking at me you know it's true although you may be married but you still call john and it's not just brotherly how are you is the family okay no john i need help you have to help me this is my husband, you know, he's a stupid man, John. I say, as it is always, you, you know, we know ourselves. I say, no problem, John. Can you do the transfer now? Praise God. That's why they are not faithful. That's why they are not desperate to change their husbands. When they come for prayer meetings like this and they say, if your husband is not doing well, pray. They are not praying. They know the prayer will be answered and they are not interested. So they rather just other people pray. And you see the woman just praying, just looking around. Because whatever happens, there is a, well, you don't say concubine for a man, do you? Somebody somewhere, an affiliate. 
who they are waiting for. Number two, brothers, what should you look at in a woman? A woman who is submissive to the man at all times. Submissive to the man on the line at all times. I don't have a problem with submission, but when? At all times, convenient or not. Submission has never been a choice. Write it down. That's your own part. Oh, apostle, you don't know how foolish my husband is. Don't worry, I'm coming. I've not finished. For now, just know your own role. Submit. Submission is a difficult thing. Listen, ladies, look at me. Let me tell you a big secret. Submission is a risk. It's a risk. You don't know the man too well. No matter how long you have been going out, submission is a risk. When you marry, you will discover many other things you never knew. Submission is by faith and it's a risk. It's a risk. You've not seen what the man can do when he has money. You've not seen what the man can do when he doesn't have money. You've not seen what the man can do when his job is under pressure. You've not seen what he's done if he's promoted to become a CEO. Yet the Bible says submit. Submission is a risk. You need the Holy Spirit to do it. That's why you have your own part to make sure that the authority you submit to has been vetted thoroughly by God. Hallelujah. You must submit to the man at all times. When ladies refuse to submit to their husbands and they say he's not man enough, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible did not say submit to man enough men. Apostle is not, he's not providing anything. I'm the one bringing the money. I'm the one paying the school fees. I'm not stupid. I know. Be word compliant. You are, can only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. There are many ladies who want the men. Listen, and sisters, please hear me. Most of us, this mindset came from our mothers and our, our parents generally. We must correct it. The idea that a man must prove he is capable, then I will now submit to him. Hey, you are a hypocrite. You are doing this exactly what his secretary is doing in the office. Who will not submit to a man who gives you food? If I buy you a plate of food, won't you greet me like this the next time? That's what you want your husband to do. There is a difference between your husband and other people. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but it's the Bible. Remember, we agreed that we are going to submit to God in all things. That's the Bible. Submission is hard. I never said it is easy. I never said it is easy. You will be a fool submitting. It's sad, but it's the truth. Because there are times it will not make sense. Your friends will look at you and say, you are stupid. Why are you doing this? Your husband does not deserve you. It's true. But the Bible says, that's why for those of you who are not married and those of you who are not in a relationship, you should thank God. All this rush, I want to enter a relationship. My blood is hot. You will thank God now for this message. Because the relationship you would have entered will be the beginning of disaster. No guidance. Submit to the man at all times. And it starts from the relationship. It's not when you get married. No, it starts from the relationship. I know submission is not foolishness, but the Bible instructs it. You see why mentorship is good? You see why I spoke about a spiritual authority? Because if you are playing your role well, and the man is not doing his thing, you have a right. That third party that has been authorized can come in and say, no, 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 no. Wife is doing her part well. And because the man submits to authority, he will listen. If his deliverance, they will cast the demon out. If he's counseling, they will manage his pressures at the moment. But where you are submitting to a man who does not submit to God, does not submit to authority, you are in trouble. Big trouble. What is number three? Let's hurry up. What kind of woman should you marry, brother? A woman who is sacrificial and hospitable. Third point. Sacrificial and hospitable. In the 21st century, you marry a woman who cannot sacrifice, you have married disaster. There are many ladies who like, who cannot inconvenience themselves for the growth of their homes. No. Hallelujah. The moment the man loses his job, the wife changes. She can't love him again. 
There are many people I counsel and it's, it's sad the way their wives treat them when things are not going well. Oh, he just bought a house. He just got promotion. My husband, my husband. They just blackmailed him. Oh. They said, ah, this and that happened and they demoted him. She won't refuse, but you see the body language. Honey, why now? You know I don't like plantain. Please don't disturb me. In this house, when you bring money, we cook well. Subliminal statements. You have started communicating. It's a terrible thing. Please hear what I'm saying. The Lord is speaking very seriously. Never submit to a man because he has money or because he does not have money. The Bible never does that. The Bible never instructs that. So choose whether you want to marry or not. Thank God marriage is not compulsory. But if you want to do it God's way, you must submit. There is no excuse for rebellion. It's a terrible thing when women gather together with their friends. Now I know, I know, look, I understand that there are times that women sit down and talk to comfort themselves. But there are women who are perpetually in a habit, in a habit of sitting with groups. They travel to this state, there is a group. And they sit down and lambast their husbands. They talk all kinds of nonsense, reveal family secrets, bedroom secrets are, that are not for the consumption of the public. And when they finish, they come back and they expect all those women everywhere to respect the men. They will not. Your man, your man had a challenge and maybe he had an affair with a lady. He has apologized. A man of God came in. They managed the situation. It's only you and the pastor who has managed the situation. You now carried your mouth. You have run it from east to west, from UK to London. Everybody knows your husband once had a challenge. And one day they look at him and the day he annoys the person who knows that secret, the person will go and publish something. In 1971, you see them do it in America. When God is about to bless somebody, somebody will just come crying on TV and say, look, I remember what you did to me. These are that. Because we don't keep quiet. The Bible says that even a fool when he's silent is regarded wise. The Bible tells every woman to cover her head there is a dimension of physical covering but there is a dimension of spiritual covering cover your head the head over your life protect him protect him he's vulnerable protect him are you getting blessed sacrificial listen no matter how rich you are no matter how blessed you are a time must come in your relationship and your marriage when you will need sacrifice. Is that true? Sacrifice. There may be times when God can give an instruction. Promise. So that three bedroom flat that you have built and go to a rented apartment. I don't teach irresponsibility but there are times God will give that instruction and for those times it will require sacrifice there are times because you want a good education of your child you will constrain certain things please we cannot go to London on vacation one day we will go but for now we cannot go let us use that money to train our children but there are many women they won't hear other women are going even those who are your genius in office but we we are here no unhealthy comparison hospitality I don't want to talk about that sadly there are ladies who are not hospitable at all you will buy bonds together with a friend you are just still with the friend you will eat the bonds eat the second one eat the third one squeeze the leather and try and say guy this bond self is not very sweet you will never give it even to say please take you give them once if they say no you refuse because you never meant to give it stingy attitudes and that kind of thing translates in a home visitors who come to your house and sit down for hours they are discussing critical issues with your husband there are even women men of god who come to their house and they won't do anything when the man is about going ah, ah when we are warming rice please i stayed in your house for two hours warming with rice even if you are cooking it it will be done by then <laughs> ladies listen 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 please don't laugh it's a serious thing it starts from your attitude in the hostel your pot is your own your corner is your own your everything is your own your shoe is your own your water is your own your bible is your own your bed sheet is your own that's how everything will be your own even when you get married you will demarcate it husband this section of the house is for me 
this one is for you this one is for the children there are many people who cannot give they like taking but they cannot give me ever buy anything for a guy over my dead body he will keep buying for me oh. because to buy 200 naira the charge card he said what will I do he's already rich that's he's the one that asked me out I didn't ask him all that, those stupid Nigerian film type wise sayings that many people imbibe and keep using to destroy their lives no sir sacrifice say sacrifice you must learn to sacrifice many ladies feel ashamed being sacrificial they feel cheap being sacrificial we have been indoctrinated by a society that makes women feel cheap when they have to sacrifice so they come to a guy and honestly speaking all this guy has is a small room and all of this but God is helping him and no 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 that attitude of sacrifice is not there I want tomorrow now now I want tomorrow now they say we should do this this and that I need 90,000 from you and the brother says look honestly I don't have anything now you know it I mean you can take my ATM you won't hate him but your body language there are many relationships I've counseled the moment the guy does not have money he's in trouble you will see the language of the lady one month before he gave her 10,000 as if it's your father you called your physical father he said he won't give you anything you now call somebody you are going out with and you want to swallow him only 2,000 okay I'm grateful you will say you are grateful but your body language for that remaining one month Kai, is being shameless it's not good training hallelujah you come into the life of a man you did not contribute anything yet just because he loves you you want to sit down at the throne of his heart and control his ATM and control his destiny the only person permitted to occupy that position is Jesus are we together yeah. there are many brothers suffering under the hands of of ladies and women and wives in many respects who cannot be patient you don't eat tomorrow today are you getting blessed brothers the last thing is now the physical factor are you seeing that is now I even brought the physical factor it must be in that order that's when you can look at every other thing you want to look at she beautiful is she all of these things L listen as I have known God more truly let me tell you this as I have known God more and as I have received mentorship from men and women and elderly people who have walked in this life I found out that all these physical things they are important but sincerely let me tell you the truth from the depth of my heart they will fade like a leaf they will fade and vanish like a leaf I have counseled very beautiful women whose husbands pounded their faces like whatever and drove them out without praying about it. If the entire reason why you are attracted to a woman is physical, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. I was in Jos when I went to see my parents at, at the beginning of this year. I happened to go and visit um, one man. He used to be my principal and that was the advice he gave me before he knelt down and, 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 and I'll pray for him brothers and sisters let me tell you one truth be careful I'm not saying physical things are not important but when your concentration on physical beauty or attraction or looks or physique or shape or whatever it is supersedes the fear of God are we together now supersedes what's the second one submission to the man supersedes whatever You've heard me say it again. You just come and meet a lady. There are serious issues. Maybe in a family of 10 and all of them are non-Christians. You know what I mean? And she's the only Christian. She's saying, sorry, oh, this is the family you are going to. You didn't settle down to pray. You say, no problem. You are too fine for me to let you go. You are in trouble. My mother is a witch. It's okay. I love you like that. I, me, I'm telling you, she's a traditional. I know. Don't, don't worry. There's koinonia. There's miracle service. And people get a lot of casualties. Sorry, man of uh, my brother, I need to tell you something. I was born with some kind of deficiency. Honestly, I'm physically not able to take in. I can't have a child. That's a little what is children. The most important thing is love for you. You now drive yourself and get married. After two years, you want to kill her. 
as if she didn't tell you. You see it. Please spiritualize, spiritualize your process of getting a wife. Don't be carnal. Don't sit with brothers and say, Have you looked at this one? What do you what can you say? It depends on who you are talking to. If you are talking, if you are talking to a brother who is not born again, you are in trouble. He will give you the counsel of Ahitophel. And after two years, you will be surprised to see that beauty can fade. Say amen. God fearing, submissive at all times, sacrificial hospitable let me talk about responsibility for a while and then maybe for a few minutes and then we'll pray write it down first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 please give us first timothy 5 verse 8 quickly brothers i want to talk to you now i want to talk to everybody but specifically to the men we need responsible men in our society first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 is that possible if that's not possible i would look for it Go ahead and read it. It's projected inside, outside. One to read. Uh huh. Hold on. This is a big revelation. Stop there. The Bible says, provide for his own. His own talks of relative and everybody connected. Then it says, but especially, meaning first and foremost, what's your first responsibility? The Bible never said, love your neighbor as yourself. There are people who sit down and their wives are suffering and they are donating cars and buses to churches. Whereas they cannot pay their children's school fees. It's an irresponsible life. The Bible says, especially to those of his own house. He said he had denied what? The faith. And is worse than an infidel. Write this down. What is responsibility? Responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something. Responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something. Number two, quickly. Responsibility is an awareness of consequences. An awareness of consequences. That if you do this, there is a consequence. If you do not do this, there is a consequence. Responsibility is an awareness of consequence. I identified a few reasons here where people are why people are generally not responsible. Let me talk about them for a few minutes. Number one, the reason why many people are not responsible and why they may never succeed is their indecision over their success and establishment the reason why many brothers many sisters but brothers especially may never get established is indecision there is a difference between a wish and a decision i want to eat rice that's a wish i want to eat rice but i will get up and go to the restaurant and buy it or i will go to the market to cook it that's a decision backed up by the willingness to pay the price to actualize it there are many brothers wishing wishing through prayer wishing through reading books wishing through receiving prophecy wishing through dropping their prayer points in miracle service no wishing does not pro provide an answer indecision over being successful look at me God is speaking to people here. I preached, the first message I preached about responsibility in ministry was a message called, come out of your father's house. That message blessed people in no small way. There are many of us who keep lying to ourselves that we are young. I'm, I'm young, you know, I am 20, I am 30, even 40, you say you are young. Are we together? You must learn to take responsibility over your heart your life if anything will be done you will have to contribute in making it happen indecision you've never made a decision to rise up and be serious you've made a decision to marry you've made a decision to have children you've made a decision to fantasize but you've not made a decision to be diligent diligent and say no I'm tired of the way my life is Lord Jesus things have to change Look, let me tell you something. 
there are brothers listening to me right now and some following online this night should be your night of decision many years ago i got i made up my mind that i was going to be a very responsible person i it was a vow that i took with god are we together exactly 14 years ago in fact 15 years ago exactly 15 years ago i made that decision that i was going to be serious and be responsible the first book i bought was discovering your purpose by dr mike mudok dr miles munro and i sat down when i read that book i cried i remember writing it i still have the book till today it was a vow that i wrote i will be a responsible man of god i will be a, a responsible father i'll be a responsible husband i'll be a responsible leader decisions how do i know you have taken a decision to be successful when you stop making excuses excuses the language of irresponsible men i would have done it but it's not my fault you too you understand no sir stop making excuses nigeria is in recession that's why no men who make men who are fond of making excuses are not responsible men and that includes women too of course number two admit your mistakes that's how i'll know you have decided to succeed admit your mistakes admit it oh i was careless in this area i admit number three stop blaming other people for your problems many young nigerians like this we blame government we blame all kinds of things we blame demons we blame our father my father didn't train me well at my age look at it's now i'm entering 100 level it's not the best but now that you have entered take responsibility take responsibility there are too many people in anger blaming people they didn't pay my school fees the reason why i'm sleeping around for school fees is because i have a stupid father okay i agree i sympathize with you but now that you are in christ is god speaking to us tonight His teaching is becoming hot koinonia is quiet i pray that is entering your spirit because that's the goal stop making excuses brother stop making excuses stop making excuses you are making the same excuse since you were 15 you are 31 now stop making excuses your father drove your mother when you were nine years now you are 20 you are 20 11 years ago get over it and move forward oh apostle i was raped when i was two years i'm sorry i feel very bad for you but the god of heaven has helped i i i'm, I'm not i i know it's very bad and it's disheartening but get over it and move forward in fact, we don't even have too much of that in Africa. It's down the west you find irresponsible people. A 70 year old man will come out and say the reason why he was, he was poor was because the father emotionally abused him and they will send a counselor 70 years. He, he abused you. When, how old were you? I was five. For 65 years you allowed your life to move like a car without a driver and now you are blaming your father going to stand in his graveyard. Dad, I know you're dead. But this and that and that trouble stories all this drama and gimmicks oh no take responsibility stand and throw stones at a graveyard and go back 70 years that's a wasted life indecision have you made a decision that you will succeed Brothers, look at me. Have you made a decision that your children will not beg for school fees under your authority? Don't say amen. Have you made a decision? Have you made a decision that your wife will not be moving around and go and enter one bus and somebody will be pushing her pregnant nine months? Madam, shift! One small boy somewhere is pushing your wife. Have you made a decision to be responsible? Have you made a decision to train your children in the fear of the Lord? Have you made a decision to bring the banner of Jesus in your family? Have you made a decision 
that you are not going to sit one day and explain and tell your children stories and say that man on TV we were classmates have you made a decision many of us have not we have been wishing but we have never made a decision tonight make it in koinonia are we together make that decision make that decision when you make a decision to be successful you will stop immediately you stop being a small child the concept of small child is not by age the moment there is nothing that occupies your life to keep you focused that's why people are free 10 o'clock you see them moving around drinking sugar cane on the road eating carrots on the road just moving around and they say ah bros i don't know and say you are free are you are you free say yes where are you going man i got one movie there's one new computer game that's a man who has not made a decision to be successful because when you make that decision your purpose is supposed to occupy you for a lifetime you will be too busy you have to even receive grace from god to think about marriage many people are not purpose driven by nine o'clock you've slept you wake up by six because you are free you still sleep back wake up by 12 you wake up you are still free you still sleep back you spend from four to five making calls disturbing visionary people how are you it's been a while I say sorry i'm walking why are you treating me like this is it because i don't have money let's talk jerry and the person is saying i'm busy and you call it pride may you be too busy for your enemies to distract you may you be too busy for visionless people to come into your life and come gossiping talking nonsense there are many of us our idleness and our purposelessness has created the exact atmosphere for gossip and everything because you are not working you don't do anything people will leave their homes and come and crowd in your house your your house is the meeting place everybody talks about their marriage they talk about their children they talk about everything you are the recipient Are we together? Somebody wants to come and gossip. As he's coming close to your house, he sees that you are busy. There are so many things happening. Many brothers are too idle. They are too idle. Call them in the night, they are snoring. Call them in the morning, they are snoring. You're not going to make a great life that way. Look, I will tell you the truth because I love you. That's why many of our parents could not pay our school fees. Huh? Could not pay our school fees. There are fathers today. There are many people seated here. It's not your parents that are paying your school fees. And they are alive. And they are doing well. You come and meet them and say, Daddy, I need school fees. They say, are you stupid? What should I do? Is it that I don't know what is happening in Nigeria? Automatically, what they are telling you is, are you not a lady? Go and do whatever you know to do to bring the fees. Do you know how I know many parents are irresponsible? Now, let me say this. And I say it with all honor to God for the privilege of being able to help people. Out of all the people I have paid their school fees and paid the school fees, less than 2%, less than 2% of their parents have cared to call to find out who is paying your school fees. There are people who have been paying their school fees for more than four years. There are people who have paid their school fees from secondary school till they graduated. And not once did their parents call to say, come on, who exactly is the man of God that is paying your school fees? Let's at least come and see him and say thank you. Are we together? Yeah. So I know what I'm saying. Very irresponsible people. There are people, some of you, as you are here now, although you are a student, you are still sending money home. Your father is alive. Your mother is alive. It's not that they are old. They cannot work. They will even call you. My daughter, nothing for us this month. And they never ask you how the money is coming. So you don't even... Do you know, I made a statement and um, it is scaring me. The things that women and even men do for money is becoming scary. As I counsel people, I'm being afraid. Honestly, I will tell you this. There are many people, I tell you, their parents are not responsible for their lives. A daughter in a family where they cannot even afford bottled water comes with a phone of 150,000. She's not earning, she's not working. You don't know who is in a relationship with her. No brother has come to show he's responsible. And the father says, uh -uh, you are enjoying, you know. Just leave our own for us. 
You see that kind of man? Somebody comes to drop your daughter by 11.30 in the night. 11.30, you are the one as the father opens the gate for him. Say, ah, my God, look at this guy. Welcome. She enters with a new dressing that already shows hellfire. And yet, you, you please see, this thing I'm saying, I'm not being hard on people. I'm challenging something. If you love Jesus Christ and you love your future, you will love what I'm saying. You may not love me, but love what I'm saying. There's too much carelessness. To the extent that there are many parents who don't even know whether their daughters in, are in the home or not. Three days they've not come home. They don't know. If they see them, fine. If they don't see them, fine. It's a different thing. If they are adults, they can live their lives. You can say, this is my daughter, but I did not teach her this. She's taking her decision about life. But you see some of these young ladies that move around? Very small girls. They look at you. Even as a man of God, they don't respect you. Because people older than you are the ones dealing with them. You greet them, they want to treat you like that man who was with them yesterday. A stupid attitude. They see you, you even look at them and you see them doing some funny things. You are trying to correct them and tell them something is wrong. Everybody in their eyes is a boyfriend. They don't know the difference between leaders. They are seeing their parents greeting a man of God and they come out and they are behaving all kinds of things. They think he's another toaster. No respect, no dignity. Are we together? Yeah. This is the carelessness that is happening in society. Do you know, to the point that if you bless a lady and give her 5,000, she will keep be looking at you and smiling. It's like she's waiting for the other side of the deal. What other side? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because nobody helps for nothing. We live in a society where nobody helps for nothing. If I give you 10,000 naira, you know what to do tomorrow. See, listen, let me encourage you. I don't condemn you, but if there is any man in your life, please listen to me, listen to me, who you are exchanging money for going to meet that man, stop it this night. In the name of Jesus, say amen. amen. Say it. Amen. Send them text messages. Whether he's a lecturer or a military officer in judge, send him a text message after Koinonia and say, no weekend again, sir. He said, why? Say, a man of God I love so much has spoken. Oh, I will double what I'm giving you. That's not the issue. Are we together? It's very important. It's very disheartening. Please, if you're a parent here and you are listening to me, I'm not saying you sit down and probe your daughters. Ladies, please don't get it personal. But someone has got to talk to them. It's, it's, too, it's too much. It's too careless. It's too much. A daughter comes with a phone that even her father cannot buy. 250,000 naira phone. A laptop. Whatever it is. And nobody can ask a question. Nobody. Of course you cannot ask because you were never part of her life. You never contributed in making it happen. So is it today now you ask her where did the laptop come from? It's a terrible thing. See, when you see me close to my ladies in Koinonia here, it's for a reason. Many of them literally did not have that father figure in their life. Literally. The moment they are hungry, they know they must sleep with somebody. So for them, they are shocked having somebody that can bless your life. Genuinely. Okay, parents, we need, we have work to do. Many of our parents have really failed us. It's very important. But then we must take responsibility. Please, sisters, you are going to vow in the name of the Lord today. It's better for them to drive you away from school than you should. Do you know how many people you catch HIV today? Do you think the man who gave you the HIV? There are many people who move around you are seeing. It looks like they are healthy. The, 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 aside from the spirit in them, spiritually speaking, curses, yokes, spells on their head, they land everything on your destiny. You are too small for that kind, of, that kind of thing. There are people who you see them young and small, but the things they have gone through, they can sell you and bring the change. 
they look at you as if they don't know anything the Lord will help us the Lord will seriously help us Valentine is coming again an opportunity for destroyers to emerge from tomorrow they are selling cakes now selling balloons selling letters selling all kinds of things they will come roaming around like wolves about to eat up the destinies of people they leave their wives and their children some of them their parents some of the people that some of these men are looking for the lady they are looking for is even the daughter of the man's friend is that true yeah there are ladies that pride themselves in dealing with certain classes of men we don't do all these small small boys no us our own we deal with abuja kind 99 days for the thief the the owner is not your husband the owner is jesus the day the owner will come and say look i'm fed up with your life you'll be in trouble men will go and catch hiv and come and give their wives women will catch hiv and give their husbands and kill themselves I paid a lady's school fees today by the grace of God and to the glory of God. And it was a disheartening situation. Her registration was closing today. In one of, I don't even know the person in the university today. Her father and her mother both died of HIV and left two of them, taking care of themselves. I asked the lady, how have you been paying your school fees? She said, I do tailoring. I laughed. I said, I'm not a small child. How have you been paying your school fees? Answer me. What is you do tailoring? How much is your school fees and how much do you sew clothes? And that's when she shocked me and said she has been paying it by doing whatever she does with her pastor. <laughs> nothing goes for nothing. This is Nigeria. You can't, you can't eat your cake and have it. I live to praise your name. I have no fear. Of what tomorrow brings. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Proverbs 21 verse 20. I want to cast a spirit among men tonight. It's called the spirit of a waster. Write it down. The spirit of a waster. We must cast that spirit out of our brothers. The spirit of waste. Proverbs 21 verse 20. Wasted opportunities, wasted relationships. I like us to read it, it's projected. One to read. An oil in the dwelling of the wise. Uh huh. But a foolish man spended it up. Look at me. You know, when I talk to many brothers, the first thing they tell me is, Apostle, times are hard. There's no money. I want to do business. There is no money. It's a lie. Look at me. God has been faithful to many brothers. If you are a typer at one point or the other in your life, God has been faithful. But many people in the body of Christ are wasters. Wasters of resources. Wasters of opportunities. Living a lie. Living a false life. Your salary is 50,000. But you are staying in a house of 500,000. You are a waster. Are we together? Your salary is 100,000. You are driving a car of 5.5. You are a waster. I told people, don't buy a car until you have money up to 10% of the value of that car consistently for maintenance. Your maintenance cost is approximately 10 to 20% of the overall value of the car you buy on a consistent basis many people go and collect loans from the bank instead of them to buy a simple car they buy different kinds of cars move around to prove a point you are earning 20,000 you are buying a material of 50,000 and you wear it and everybody around you does not know let me show you how Satan cheats Africans there are many of us, if you did not have the spirit of a waster, God has been faithful in your life. You would have raised up to a million naira right now to do responsible things. How about marriage? How we waste money in Africa? You get the best venue, hire the best people, 
you go and get a small boy and pay for that boy 30,000 naira to hold a ring. Can't you put it in your pocket? Of course, why are you laughing? Will he stop it from entering her hand? The spirit of a waster is destroying Nigerians. You are a student, you are wearing a suit of 50,000 and you pride yourself all around. I have this. No, sir. It's a waster. And we pastors have been victims of this because in an attempt to help people become successful, we put pressure on them to prove that the world is working. And in an attempt to show that the world is working, the money that God gave the guy to help him, he now uses it to buy a car as a 100 level student to show that he has faith. Faith is not foolishness. You are in 200 level, you are wearing a, 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 a weaver of, of 20,000. No. There are many students who are eating where certain lecturers are eating. Where a piece of meat, a big piece of meat is 500 naira. See that? And you eat three square meals a day. They give you 10,000 naira in a week you spent. Some of us have a spirit of spending. You can't rest till it finishes. It's a spirit. Waster. Are we together? You are wearing a shoe of this amount. Please, I'm talking to you. You have to square up. There are things in your life you can go and sell. That's your capital. Sell all those nonsense. You have three phones. Who are you calling? You are loading your phone with 10,000 naira in a month. That's somebody's salary. And you, all you are doing is gisting. Rooms that we give the devil to destroy our lives. Praise the Lord. You are not doing anything. Your baba comes to meet you. 1,000 naira per baby. Can't you go and kill? What are you rushing for? Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are people who don't have any money. You are not earning anything. You charter a car to wherever you want to go to. Let me show you how we waste money. 25,000 naira on a trip. Oh, I can't enter night bus. We have to fly. 30,000 naira. Economy is finished. Book business class. 45,000 naira. You are paying. You are flying away your destiny. Whereas with 5,000 naira, you can with honor. I'm not saying the days will not come for those things. But not now. Fake life. You see people living. Especially we men of God. Fake life. So that I will show that I'm anointed. You go and buy a watch of 100,000. You are wearing it. No, let me tell you. When you rise, everything around you rises. So when you fake it, nothing around you can resonate with the level you claim to have been. You don't know anybody that warrants that level of influence. When Koinonia started here, with crowds of people packed to outside, I will come on a bike. A bike. Miracle service. People are waiting. The next thing you hear sound of a bike, I will drop from it honorably with my Bible. And at that time, I was already blessed. Please, stop any fake life. We know you are responsible and we know God will help you. Brothers, am I speaking to you? This pressure of trying to look like Joshua Selman, you will die, oh, you don't know the fire I've passed through to come where I am. No, no, sir. This pressure of trying to do this. Visitors, if I am coming to your house, if all you have is water, keep it there. Don't go and borrow money to cook Turkey, I didn't ask you. God is faithful. I'm not coming for food. There are families, and women of God, may God forgive us honestly. Because when any time they visit any family, they must prepare honorarium. Thank God no leader is doing that here. The day I hear that any leader in this place is going to anybody's house and saying they should package honorarium. Oh, no, 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 no. The God that sent me will judge that leader. Judge that leader that you go to anybody's house under the canopy of Koinonia and go and say they should give you. No, not every seed self is collectible. Some things are your birthright. You are collecting your honor and your dignity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is God helping us tonight? The spirit of waste. You start saving. You get 50,000 naira every day from your parents. That's a worker salary. Yet before half of the month, you are begging people who are on their own. 
your makeup kit is 20,000. Who cares? If you have the money, that's all right. There are some of us now, you are planning marriage. You've not gone anywhere. You've spent 2.5. What are you doing with it? Wedding gown, 500,000. To wear once. Are you wearing it every day? Suit, 100,000. There is a particular anko that this group, where is it in the Bible? If you don't have money, everybody should dress well. Just honor them. Will they deny that they are your parents? Must they dress in anko? Please hear what I'm saying, oh. If eat your size and grow gradually, God will honor you. Honeymoon, you want to travel out to where? If you don't have the money, explain to your wife. Honeymoon is a mentality, not, a, not an act. Africans waste money. I was sharing with some people today. 12 years celebration of getting born again. 13 years of getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Two years of being delivered from smoking. And we organize a big ceremony. We fly people from everywhere. December, the entire savings of Nigerians for January to November finishes in three days. Three days of hilarious living. You buy hamper 14,000 per one. You buy almost 20 to share because you are looking for a good name in church. No, sir. There are brothers here, you have no business buying a laptop. You don't have the money. There are sisters, you have no business buying certain materials. If all you have is one trouser, my brother, iron it with dignity. The God of heaven who sees you will honor you. You are not irresponsible. If you meet the sister and she doesn't like you because of the trouser, God just saved you from a bad wife. Go away and trust God for a lady who knows how to see in the spirit. Hallelujah. Don't put pressure on yourself. You enter any relationship that is a high maintenance relationship, killing you. Book for counseling. Book for counseling fast and say, Apostle, I need help. I entered it. I, I'm not saying you are bad people. That's what counseling is for. To be able to talk to you and say, No, no, no. I think you are spending too much. People get married and they don't have a house. They get married, they spend 2.5 million and they cannot afford 150,000 for a house because of the life of a waster. May the Lord deliver us from the spirit of waste. What of ministries that waste? Uncommanded projects. Projects that are not commanded by God. Oh, this other man of God is doing it. Let's do it too. A church comes and they don't have money simply because they are seeing people pay school fees. They now start paying people school fees and the entire reserve of the ministry disappears. Oh, they are buying a pulpit. Oh, they are buying this. This is five million. We must also buy it. Uncommanded project. Anywhere God has not taken me to, I'm not under pressure. I will get there for sure. Whether you believe it or not, I will get there. There are levels Koinonia has reached now by the grace of God and there are levels we have not reached. I will never put myself under pressure to get into those levels. Brother, your hand does not reach to buy a car. Be patient. Just take it easy. The God of heaven will give you. When favor comes upon your life, it will be like rain. In 24 hours, God will change your life. But by the time you force the door, it will open, but it will kill you. We are going to pray. Has anyone learned something tonight? God wants us to rise to be great men and women. First in our family lives, but also in every other thing. Every lady here trusting God for a good man. May the God that I serve bring a good man to your life. And any brother trusting God for a good woman, may God bring a good person. But you cannot reap a seed you are not sowing. You cannot sow the seed of a stupid man and reap a virtuous woman. You cannot reap, sow a seed of a wicked woman and reap an award-winning man. God is not that unjust. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. So ladies, please listen to me. As I round up, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be careful with some of this carnality and materialism. Be careful. I've challenged the brothers to be serious, but you must be careful. There is nobody, no tree, no matter how well you water and fertilize it, 
it will not become a giant oak tree in one day but there's potentials for it are you together now yeah there are people some of you admire if you saw them 10 20 years ago you will not like them but faith i saw one man of god when i saw his picture it was as if he was with rope he used to tie his waist you can use measuring tape and tie the waist his wedding with his wife, she just stood as if they carried that cap, as if they carried cap somewhere and just put on her head. And the guy, the guy should be a multi-millionaire, if not a billionaire today. He lavishes upon his wife like there's no tomorrow. That's the price of taking the risk with the man. If you are risk averse, you sit down there. Is God helping us? And brothers, be responsible. Don't take for granted that I've told ladies to be responsible to be responsible and you sit down you are stingy you are greedy you are in a relationship valentine is coming you are pretending like you don't know plan you must do something on tuesday plan plan you have today saturday sunday monday tuesday morning plan so that you don't take for granted and say because some of those things are laziness please we must balance it brothers you must be serious Sisters, you must be serious. Make up your mind that you are going to make a good decision. Dissociate from any dangerous and poisonous relationship. Brother, you are in a relationship that is, is killing you, is eating you up, spiritually and financially. I may not advise you to break, but I advise you to cry for help. Cry for help. Don't die in silence. Sister, you are in a relationship with a brother who is oppressing you and making nonsense out of your life because I said you should be virtuous. Cry for help. And if it's not changing, leave him. Leave him. It is scriptural to leave a relationship that does not represent where you are going. Are we together? We are going to pray. We will continue tomorrow during the workers retreat. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray, but I want, please, no moving around. No moving around. I want everyone to stand just, just stand still for a moment. And I want you to think about your life in one minute. Especially for the brothers. I want you to meditate upon your life in one minute. What will your 10 years be from now? What will your 20 years be? At the rate you are going with your life. At the rate of your mindset. At the rate at which your understanding is. What kind of results are you producing? Sister, look at your life now and be sincere between you and the God of heaven. The seeds you are sowing now, what kind of harvest do you see in front of you? Now, I want you to lift your voice before the God of heaven. In the next two or three minutes, cry. He says, my help comes from the Lord. Cry, 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 cry. Please, I want you to cry to God. I've said many things tonight and you know where it affects you. I want you to cry before God in one minute. Lord, I have seen a mindset. I've seen a mindset that is destructive. I need you to help me. I'm a godly brother, but I've seen that I've been irresponsible. I have been lazy. Lazy about my relationship. Lazy about my life. I've been given flimsy excuses. I take responsibility tonight. Are you praying? lady and have allowed a wrong mindset a materialistic mindset a mindset that is carnal to consume me I ask you for help lift your voice and pray if every other thing I said tonight touched you anywhere please lift your voice and cry to the God of God for help responsible as a father pray you are connecting with us online pray i will not be responsible as a husband to my wife to my children i take responsibility tonight Hallelujah.
prayer point number two father take away every spirit of indiscipline laziness and wastage and irresponsibility let it live my life forever lift your voice and pray laziness mental laziness entitlement mentality waiting for father to do this for me waiting for mother to do this for me flimsy excuses are you praying please pray this is your destiny pray this is your destiny pray this is your destiny hallelujah hallelujah lord break any relationship in my life love relationship wrong associations that are contributing to my downfall in life let them be scattered now i don't care how long any wrong friend wrong associate wrong whatever it is pray i break it now i break it now no negotiation i break it now friends that give me wrong counsel I destroy it now shaka parata kata shaka ta breka teni ba shiba na 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 I was not a thief until I joined certain people and they made me to be a thief now I was not a bad girl until I joined certain cabals break free from those relationships Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Prayer point number three. Father, give me direction. First, over marriage and over every area of my life. I, I confess that I'm confused. Give me direction. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and cry out. Lord, I need direction. Concerning the issue of marriage. I need direction. If you are married, pray. Lord, concerning my family, right now, I don't even know what to do. Things are not working in my family. You've got to help me, oh God. Direction on what to do as a father. Financial direction on what stream of income to put your hands on. Don't just do anything because everybody is doing anything direction on how to go as a pastor direction on my marriage direction on a life partner direction hallelujah let me add one more prayer point before the last one you are going to say Lord walk in me and walk on me anything that makes me not to be the ideal wife anything don't pray for husband yet lord whatever makes me a bad wife whatever makes me a bad husband whatever makes ladies run away from me whatever makes men run away from me i humble myself tonight and i ask that you take it from me walk on me walk on me lift your voice and pray what is driving my husband away from me? What is driving my wife away from me? Is there something I'm doing wrong? What is driving my destiny helper away from me? What is driving the anointing away from me? What is driving favor away from me? What is driving breakthrough? Pray from your heart. There must be something I'm doing wrong. Why does my husband not love me? I may be getting it wrong somewhere. Why does my wife not love me? 
I must be getting it wrong somewhere. Why is our relationship up today and down tomorrow? Something must be wrong. I take responsibility. No passing blames. Hallelujah. Last prayer point and we're done for this night. Listen carefully. We're going to pray this prayer point before I make the altar call. There is a dimension I didn't have time to talk about. Maybe tomorrow if God grants us time during the workers retreat, I will explain. It's called the suffering help of God. Listen, listen. Ah, yeah. Brothers and sisters, God can help a man. I am a testimony of a man that God has helped. The Bible says, and Uzziah was marvelously helped of the Lord. A young man, to, for a young man to be established in Nigeria is hard. I, I admit it, it's hard. There are no jobs. Every society gets its employment from the private sector. And if the private sector is not robust in any economy, there is no job. I know the probability of an average young man to be established before 30 in Nigeria now I tell you the line is very slim if it's to follow everything justly by God when will you write jam and finish strikes in school before you finish and all the trouble that comes with sentiments and tradition you need help brothers it's neither by strength nor by power when I found out that my strength was too small to give me the result I played my role and ran to God I, I want to give you the next two minutes I don't know how you will pray this prayer but you are going to say Lord if you don't help me I will move forward oh, I, I am tired please cry, cry, cry cry God can help men oh he has been our Ebenezer as a ministry we are a testimony of men that God has helped. My life today is a testimony of how, a, of how God can help a man. Cry for his help. Cry for his help. Don't pretend you don't need it. Don't pretend you don't need it. In his help there is favor. In his help there is protection. In his help there is honor. In his help there is restoration. In his help there is speed. There is advancement. Help me, oh God. Help me over the issue of marriage. Help me over the issue of business. Help me over the issue of my children. Help me over the issue of my family. Help me over the issue of my character. Help me over the issue of everything, my career. I admit that I need your help. For he is our ever-present help. Ever-present help. Ever-present help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. If you forget anything I've shared tonight, don't forget that God can help me. You will be foolish to imagine he cannot help. My God, the God I serve, look at my life. That God cannot help a ministry. Look around and bring one koinonia poster that you've seen on the road. That God cannot help a people. Look at the financial records of the millions of naira spent by this ministry. Debt free completely not owing any man as a ministry dead or alive. Listen, brothers and sisters, God can help a man. I tell you, he can deliver you. He can protect you. Some of us have been trying on our strength. We are going to pray that prayer one more time and say, Lord, I give up my strength. I lay down my pride. Please help me. Help me to be established. I'm getting older and older and at the rate of the way things are going, my job cannot establish me. My salary cannot establish me. My business cannot establish me. I need help from heaven. Hallelujah. 
standing everyone inside outside and all the people following us online whatever nation you are in it doesn't matter distance is no barrier please listen i want to make a very serious altar call now two in one first and foremost those who are say man of god have been waiting for this call because i'm about to run to jesus right now i don't like the way my life is going i need jesus you don't need counseling for some people you need jesus there's no level of counseling that will, re that will replace lack of the life of God. Don't sit down. This is not an initiation to be a Christian. This is a serious affair with your destiny. Are we together now? The second group of people are those that are saying, Lord, I'm coming before you to truly repent. I'm asking you to help me. I'm asking you to help me with all my heart. You may not be sleeping around. You may not be drinking. You may not be smoking, but you know your life is as scattered as whatever. And you know that you have not been walking in the ways of God. You are saying, Lord, my pride is what has brought me to this trouble. I need your help fast. These two categories of people. Please, if you are outside, start running just before we come. I'm going to count one to five. It's not by force. There is nothing tonight that is by force. But I tell you, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Start coming. For the world today. Run like there's fire on the mountain. There's no other. Jesus is the way. I want you to run from any of the overflows. Join them. Those following us online, there is still hope for you. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I don't care what has happened in your life. The Lord Jesus will give you a new beginning. It doesn't matter. But you will only give those who can receive. He said, as many as received him, you can reject him. Hallelujah. Those of you in front, lift your right hand to heaven. You are not reciting a poem. This is not a memory verse. This is not a recitation. This is a simple guide to help you make a powerful decision. Say after me from the depth of your heart. And if you didn't come out here and you are part of them, those online, say it where you are. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you to help me tonight. I have come before you sincerely asking you to intervene in my life I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that from today my sins are forgiven I have the life of God I move forward ever and backward never the power of Satan the power of sin and the flesh is broken over my life in the name of Jesus Keep your hands lifted. Lord Jesus, there is no man who can be perfect by himself outside of you. You are our righteousness, our holiness, and our perfection. I pray for these ones who have come. In the name of Jesus, I declare your sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus. And I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that a new life starts for you today. The grace to be responsible and to rise like an edifice is released upon you. In the name of Jesus, may your path be like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. In the name of Jesus Christ, every guilt, every condemnation over your life, I declare that it leaves your life now and forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you for this great decision. Please follow, who is there? Follow someone waving his or her hands, okay? Okay, lady, she's waving her hands, all of you this way. Just follow them. Please provide your details as required.
and the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every time you see retreats like this are times of feasting on the mysteries of the kingdom. Feasting on the mysteries of the kingdom. You can be zealous in times of dissipating spiritual energy but whether or not you are making impact in the realm of the spirit is dependent on the quality of the insight that guides your prayer it's not just the zeal and the will to pray but the insight that guides the prayer otherwise there are many prayer warriors on earth whose lives should bring forth a level and an extent of Christian experience that should defy argument. So it's not just in the dissipating of energy, but the quality of the insight. Are we together now? So every time the word of God is coming, it's an opportunity for you to receive. The word of God, Satan has never been afraid of the word of God. No. No. Satan is afraid of your understanding of it. The word of God in itself will not do Satan no harm at all. So it is, this is the most, this is the most crucial part of any meeting. When the mysteries are about to come. Because the quality of your results will be dependent on what your eyes see, not what you hear. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Please be seated for a while. Jesus, thank you. It's one mystery per day. And the reason why we share it like this is because we want our hearts to be open. My assignment is to guide us on a kingdom truth. When Jesus walked the earth, every time he walked with the disciples, it was an opportunity for him to unfold something about the operation of the kingdom I struggle very seriously with what I'm about to share because I hope that we will not only appreciate it but it's something that I pray with all my heart that if you grasp the truth that I show you tonight it will change your life in a way that will surprise you if you're with me say amen Tonight I'm sharing on the mystery of strongholds. The mystery of strongholds. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4. The mystery of strongholds. This is a powerful secret of dominion. This is a powerful secret of legislature in the realm of the spirit. The mystery of strongholds. 2 Corinthians Corinthians chapter 10 second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 10 and verse 4 when you read from verse 3 it says for though we walk in the flesh it says our warfare listen carefully this is Paul speaking now. One who was granted access. Paul called himself a steward of the mystery. He didn't call himself a preacher. Paul didn't call himself. There were people who were called men of God in the Bible. An example, Elijah. An example, Samuel. Paul never called himself a man of God. He called himself a steward of the mystery. One who was given access to the mysteries that so that when we listen to him we might be partakers of that fellowship called in a participation to come into an understanding of that mystery and this was one of the mysteries he said for though we walk in the flesh our warfare is not physical 
listen carefully our warfare is not physical and then it says in verse 4 it says for the weapons of our warfare so warfare is for sure but he's guiding you on how to engage it listen living is warfare prosperity is warfare growth is warfare but he's giving us the character of this he's saying the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god and the entire arsenal is supposed to achieve one purpose to pull down not enemies strongholds what kind of warfare is this that the enemy is not a human being he never said to pull down spirits think about that he didn't even say to pull down demons that this warfare god had to give you the tools to use and he says this fight is not against flesh and blood that the fight is not even against demons not to pull down demons to pull down strongholds <laughs> this is warfare now next verse casting down what spirits demons satan imaginations the greek word yes are and every high thing not high person high thing high information that exalted itself against the person every high thing that exalts itself above another kind of knowledge this is warfare that god gave you these tools please get what i'm teaching you tonight that this fight is not against flesh and blood but that this fight huh god gave you these spiritual tools to pull down strongholds to cast imaginations to dethrone high things and then to bring thoughts strongholds imaginations high things thoughts this is warfare now this is very strange there is no name of a spirit that is mentioned just follow me there is no name of a demon that is announced here shocker even satan is not mentioned here this is paul teaching us a dimension of warfare that is strange the mystery of strongholds are we together that a man's bondage is not necessarily the physical things you see is not even the spirits that oppress the person that when a man is ready to establish victory the focus is not even the spirit entities that are causing these problems but that there is an operation listen jesus is teaching us and this is what he said that human beings are houses and temples god said that demons also say that is that true and the bible says a spirit can live in a man follow me carefully a spirit can live in a man and that there is a possibility of casting that spirit out of a man is that true where does the spirit go to when you cast the spirit the bible says it moves around dry lands everywhere is that true and then it becomes restless what makes it restless then the bible says after a while it will turn back he never said i will go to the body he said i will still go back to my house now question a spirit is somewhere no prayer no prophet no anointing something casted it from there back into a human being that required a man of god to cast it out what made the spirit uncomfortable with an environment that it left on its own without the particular desire of a man to, to drive it think about this if this guy has a demon spirit and i lay hands on him and cast out the demon spirit 
I thought if the demon spirit is somewhere, somebody should be able to drive it back. But the demon says on his own, that environment without any human intervention does something to that demon spirit that makes it restless the same way a man of god's anointing is driving it and he starts moving back and say it is even better compared to what i am facing here it is better to go back to that human being in matthew chapter 4 you also find that account in luke chapter 4 watch this when jesus went to fast i want to tell you certain things about strongholds and about this we're going to pray but i want there are things that believers that's why i told you i struggle to share what i'm sharing there is a whole series on this that is coming jesus the bible declares that jesus is the embodiment of the godhead is that true and the bible calls him full of grace and truth now jesus goes to fast hey, Jimmy, jesus is fasting and satan is waiting for him instead of the fasting to drive demons the fasting was attracting satan listen <laughs> satan is not afraid of jesus satan is not even afraid of the fact that jesus is fasting this is jesus being the son of god alone should command respect then fasting for 40 days no food no water satan is not afraid then satan comes to jesus looks at jesus jesus is looking at him back i thought satan would be rolling and shouting and moving up and down church has never scared satan the presence of god has never scared satan listen carefully <laughs> just just take it in first like an injection let it enter and settle down then we'll continue in the book of job job chapter one the bible says once upon a time the sons of god went to show themselves to the lord is that true and the bible says satan at that time he had fallen otherwise god would not ask him where are you coming from is that true satan goes before god and he said where are you coming from he said from moving to and fro the earth what location the earth and he says have you considered my servant job and then this is what satan says there was something you put around job he never said job's prayer he never said job's fasting i every time i came to job i saw that there was something that surrounded him that i could not even touch him it made me uncomfortable i could not remain with job and he said take that thing away and watch what how i will rob his job what was satan's request it not make me more powerful not make job more powerful whatever it is and this is what job said in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord was upon my tabernacle those secrets built a fortification in the realm of the spirit and the bible says satan came not a demon he came by himself whether job was praying or not the fortifications were there he was a man of prayer he was a man of power satan feared job but he stood before god satan feared job but he went before god and stood he said i couldn't stand before this guy but i can come to stand before you it's your bible i'm, I'm not reading a, a, a it's your bible are you getting blessed and then all of that began to happen and job's life went down and then job's life came back again now watch this in luke chapter 4 let's go back to our text give us luke chapter 4 jesus just finished praying and fasting you are praying now you are fasting is that true in your mind you believe that this praying and fasting you are doing is supposed to drive out all kinds of demons there is only a kind that prayer and fasting drives says jesus our chief mentor and apostle this kind this kind there is a kind because of the nature of their operation that praying and fasting 
we are fasting together so listen to what i'm telling you now look at how this verse starts please listen jesus comma being full of the holy ghost again then goes to fast i mean he, he returned from jordan and was led of the spirit into the wilderness jesus the bread of life the holy ghost number two fasting added prayer 40 days then let's see what happens after 40 days he was tempted of the devil satan came to tempt jesus that word tempt dear is a very interesting word please follow me and the bible says and he was hungry verse 3 verse 3 and the devil said so this is the tempting now the bible says satan tempted him and the other verses are explaining the content of the temptation are we together how did satan tempt jesus if thou be the son of god command this stone that it be made bread verse 4 and jesus answered satan talked to jesus and was not afraid jesus the word put the word in his lips and was speaking that word did not cast out satan Please listen to me. I want you to be so powerful and to be so free. We have inherited a lot of religion and this is why we keep doing a lot of things and there are no results in our lives. Listen. Listen carefully. He said, Jesus said to him, answered. Satan asked Jesus a question. Jesus is replying back. Remember, this is Jesus and Satan. If they were angels, they'll say, this guy is wasting his time somewhere satan came directly to jesus what makes you think he will not come to you he went to the throne he went to the son that man shall not live jesus said it is written now this one we can we can dwell here forever because this is jesus the word and yet he's saying it is written he didn't say i said he went to scripture it is written the bible says all scriptures were inspired by the holy ghost and jesus still said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god and that was him standing man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god and jesus is standing and satan is not afraid what was wrong with his confession was it the scripture that was wrong or the person was unholy or the utterance was wrong and satan still stood if you get what i'm teaching you you will know why regardless of what people are doing it looks like satan still remains now listen this is even the fearful part temptation number two satan take him up how did he do it satan take not the baby jesus Jesus who had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Satan told him, come. And he took him into a high mountain. Now this is the fearful part. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Just flash like that. And then here was Satan's proposal. Look how shameless Satan is. We don't know how shameless he is. That's why we think just by standing as I said and live my life and you will leave you. You are joking. You watch what happened between him and Jesus. And the devil said unto him again. This is the living word. This is the logos of God. All this power I will. Please talk to me. What was the power that he would give him? Anointing. What did he call power? The kingdoms, the systems, the governments, he called them power. I will give you. And the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Do you know what Satan was telling Jesus? In heaven you drove me, but this one is my territory. Are we together now? I have influenced the government. I have influenced the system. This one belongs to me. If you ever see anybody rise, I made it happen. And so you better negotiate with me. This is Satan. He's not unaware that this is the living logos. 
but he tells him how can i be in a territory and you want to lift somebody and bypass me he said look let me tell you this is what you are trying to look for he made it flash before him and he said i will give you he called all of them power the question is how did he get it i used to think he just got it from adam yes he got the keys from adam but how did he get the governments how did he get the systems to a point that he says it is my own i will give anybody i want to give it follow me ezekiel 28 your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise ezekiel 28 verse 14 your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise i will sing i will sing of the wonders of your word I will see out for joy. I will see of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. This was a story, listen carefully, of what we call the pre Adamite dispensation. This was a dispensation before Adam, the man that we know. Are we together? The Bible, Ezekiel the prophet is giving access to revelation and he's speaking about the king of Tyre whose life parallels with that of Lucifer in the days of his glory. Now listen, I hope you know that Lucifer was created. Is that true? And the Bible acknowledges that Lucifer, please help that person, the Bible acknowledges that Lucifer was a cherub. Is that true? A cherub higher than the realm of angels. Are we together? Because by, on, by this time, the mortal man Adam was not in the equation. So after God, directly under him were the cherubs or the cherubims. Under the cherubims were the seraphims. Then the seraphims and were the angelic keda. And then the humanoid species that existed within that civilization. Are we together this was the organogram and then this is a description of lucifer he says thou art the anointed cherub who anointed him listen who anointed him god himself anointed him and the bible says that covereth the word covereth there is the word influence that you are an anointed cherub he says i have set this so so it was part of the predeterminate counsel of god that there be a cherub that is given an anointing are we together now most of you must have heard it the word anointed there is the word mimshak you know that the word mimshak there means uh, the direct hebrew rendition means to spread like to push your tentacles the extended meaning also means to multiply your influence within a region so this is the kind of anointing that he was given and the gift and the callings of god are without repentance are we together now listen satan was given this anointing that means satan also depends on the very power of god to still be satan today are we together so we are seeing that satan got this anointing himself from god he said i have set this so that was upon the holy mountain of god thou dost walk up and down in the midst of the stones of fire most people just teach that all satan was doing was worship in heaven um it's not exactly so yes it is true that his description he said that was perfect in thy ways in in the day that that was created till iniquity was found every angel has a will satan too has a will there is nobody in heaven and on earth that is serving god by force they can choose to rebel that's why when satan chose to rebel listen carefully god himself had respect for his rebellion but when you make whatever decision you'll be ready for the consequence now watch this let's see how this corrupted anointing worked if you don't understand this you will be surprised a jimmy 
this is heaven where God dwells Lucifer's anointing is corrupted and Lucifer's anointing in the presence of God the epicenter of heaven influence one third of the angels one third this is heaven where God dwells and the power of that anointing exerted something on their wheels their wheels he never trained any angel look at the warfare that happened in heaven that Satan what did he say to the angels that they preferred him to God look at the throne room and the 24 elders yet Satan came with an anointing and spoke something and one third of the angels say we will give up the throne room for you thou anointed cherub that covereth are you seeing how he won the kings of the earth in a moment are you seeing how he won the governments and the systems and he came to Jesus he said have you forgotten I am still anointed though corrupted anyone you want with influence is under my care there is an anointing I was the light bearer of heaven Satan is a master at manipulating the minds of people. Look how easy he entered Peter. Peter, close to Jesus, he just came at will in the presence of Jesus. And Jesus looked and said, this is Satan. Peter, this is not you. Peter did not even know. This is how easy it is. Jesus was on a mission. Satan distracted Jesus to a mountain. Jesus had to return back. The anointed cherub. Let me show you where the power of Satan is. It's not just in witchcraft. The power of Satan is in his ability to capture the wheels of men, of systems, of governments. You see that? So give us 2 Corinthians 10 again. Paul was watching this in a vision while it was being shown him. And Paul said, so this is it. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal it's not just about demons and spirits because a demon is in the wilderness and there was no human being to occupy and on his own there he said i will go back where humans are because in the wilderness there are no wheels is inanimate let me go where there are human wheels and then i manipulate them listen Satan controls the earth by controlling the minds and controlling systems and controlling governments. This is a mystery that I show you. When Satan comes to you, he will not tie your hands. He is a master. There is an anointing, the very power of God working in him. And until God fortifies you, you will fall for his deceit. Satan desired to sift you like wheat. He's telling Peter, Satan desired, whereas Peter had already fallen since. This is powerful Peter. Satan came to him. Are you seeing why Satan entered Judas? Look how easy it was for him to come into the camp of Jesus and just manipulate people to the point that he almost got Jesus. Gethsemane, Jesus was there. Father, ah, and he said, no, nevertheless, not my will. Listen, Satan went to the wife of, a, of Herod and gave her a dream to advise her husband. And she got up and said, I had a dream. This man is innocent. Don't kill him. It looks like a good thing. If they didn't kill Jesus, there would not be salvation. Satan for you. Are we together? He's a master manipulator. If God does not help you, your mind is a child's play for him. He will beat you at this game. There is an anointing on him. Satan in heaven, that there is a roll call. He was talking to the angels one by one. The billions of angels in heaven, he won one third of them. To the point that they were ready to dismember themselves and leave their original estate. This is the one we are dealing with. And Paul said, listen, your focus should be on this mind. The mystery of strongholds. That the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Right? 
but to the pulling down of strongholds that's God's emphasis you want to win Satan pull down strongholds cast down imaginations 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 why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing Genesis 11 nothing they have chosen to do that they have imagined cast down imagination so the Bible says let this mind be in you Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 let this mind there is a kind of mind that must be in you which was also in Christ Jesus let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus that without this mind being in you that was also in Christ Jesus Satan will beat you at the game hands down there is an anointing he deceived angels in the presence of God Satan came to Jesus and attempted to sway Jesus the first time he didn't quote a scripture then when Jesus replied him he took him to the mountain then the third time he quoted scripture they shall keep the charge it is not the quoting of scripture that brings victory my brother my sister that's why satan can be in a meeting a demon can be with someone a pastor is preaching an anointed man is preaching the demon is joining the person who is inside listening to say hallelujah he's clapping he doesn't stop you and all of a sudden something happens and the same demon starts jumping out didn't he fear the praise and worship how many times did they yell the name of Jesus shout Jesus everybody you shouted Jesus he was still there quiet that's how you can share the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus he will share it with you and live too there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Listen, the most important part of you that Satan wants is not your body. The most important part of you that Satan wants is not your spirit. The most important part of you that Satan wants is your mind understand this your mind interfaces your body and your spirit when satan gets your mind he gets two for one he gets your body and your spirit this is the bible i'm showing you because for years i kept wondering why it looked like satan was not afraid of many things about god you close your bible and lie down on it and sleep yet the demons come and press you how many of you have fasted three days dry and on the third day you had a wicked dream demons came and oppress you you've not even broken the fast you spent time blasting in tongues and you came to us men of God and we said you don't have faith it's a lie it's a lie there are not many things Satan is afraid of I've listed some of them for you. We think he fears everything. No, sir. Satan is never afraid of the presence of God. He's only afraid of what the presence of God does to you. You, not the presence of God. There are people who make this Bible in publishing homes that are currently filled with demons inside them. Yet they are publishing Bibles. I have ministered deliverance to pastors mighty men and women of God with power who are also themselves anointed to deliver people the mystery of strongholds that Satan captures territories and captures individuals by doing something to their minds this is what is called witchcraft here's what Paul said oh foolish Galatians who has bewitched you not about drinking blood and eating flesh he sells a proposition to you in a way and manner that will force you to receive it and by it you give up the power do you know if jesus saw that kingdom and did that 
satan would rather collect salvation and give him kingdom remember jesus was about to be coronated after his death to be given a name that is above all names both of things in heaven on earth and under the earth and satan said let me give you on earth it looked like a wonderful idea are we together so paul says we are not unaware of his not his power satan has many devices many 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 devices from the word stratomai devices different ways he can come up with all kinds of plans to manipulate the minds of believers this is jesus satan stands before god and talks to god and god still respected the free will of satan listen i'm going to tell you some i know that i've attacked so many things today and many people now will insult me again because of all of this but let me tell you this i love the body of christ but i want you to be powerful for many years we were taught that satan can never access the presence of god it's a lie it's a lie it's not true there was no place for him found in heaven means that the office he occupied was no longer there but he could access the presence of God he still can in the New Testament or at least in the ministry of Jesus Satan came to Jesus many times he came to Jesus in Peter he came to Jesus in Judas he came to Jesus by himself he was not afraid It is not the presence of God that scares so that you have the Holy Spirit inside you and then people say there's nowhere Satan can come close to you be careful Jesus Luke chapter 4 verse 1 was full of the Holy Ghost and yet Satan came to him after fasting you would think the fasting would have driven him away is that true but after the fasting was attracting him and he came but there was something Jesus did he didn't just say it is written it is written what was satan looking for remember that whole thing was about words and information there is an information and jesus gave him another information the moment he found out that jesus was informed the bible says he withdrew so when satan comes to you he does not search he searches for if what do you have what residue of mystery do you have what do you know about him and what don't you know about him and he can manipulate you and beat you hands down brothers and sisters what does satan tell a man that makes him to join occult what does satan tell a man that he can carry his child and slaughter the child and while blood is coming out he's laughing satan was not there holding the knife the influence was the strength of the man by himself satan only left him with an information and went to bed and that man slaughters the child What does Satan tell a man that he dedicates a whole land to Satan? An intelligent man. Look at Jezebel. Look at Jezebel. Under her watch, the powers that be, if you serve God Almighty, you have to go on hiding. The prophets of Baal were flourishing because a woman who sat on the seat of government could manipulate the minds. Look at what Satan did to Herodias. A small girl dances before a man and then a man comes and says what do you want even if it's up to half of my kingdom I will give you is that normal listen one of the ways Satan has destroyed our lives and our families is through witchcraft but it is not witchcraft as we know he uses our imagination and distracts us into thinking it is just the drinking blood part of it and the old woman there whereas the true point of access of victory is something that he does to our minds and our imaginations to keep us through why does satan love pictures why do you go to bed and satan uses the face of your own mother to come and strangle you 
and you get up in the morning he never told you anything you just went to bed and saw the face of your mother and you got up and went to a prophet and then satan now shows a true prophet the face of your mother too and he confirms with what he sent to you in the dream and says your mother is a witch and you're a powerful prayer warrior yet you walk around believing your mother is a witch Are you getting what I'm telling you? The anointed cherub. He was not just a musician. No. No. He was not just a musician. There was an anointing on Satan for unusual influence over the minds of people. That's what we call Mimshak. That anointing you see was given to Satan. God still gives it to men. Are we together this is not just some <clears throat> the, when you see any man commanding strange dimensions of influence and getting loyalty over the minds of people whether in the secular whether in the christendom it is that same anointing that is operational a wicked man like saddam hussein look at terrorists can you imagine there are still people enrolling in terrorist groups today? Young boys will sit down and say, I want to become Hapa. Someone goes to school and studies medicine for six years and just donates himself. Is that normal? There is a grace. That was the grace that Jesus put on these disciples, on learned men. And in one day, the Bible said they were caught in the heart. Men and brethren, what do we do? And from that day to death, they stayed with him. The same grace that Satan used to deceive one third of the angels that fell. All power. I'm not saying to use demon powers or this. I'm explaining something powerful to you. That when God wants to give you influence, he gives you an anointing that does something to the minds of men. Break every chain. Break every chain. That that is the kind of anointing that people go to the occult and say, I want to start a business. Listen carefully. And they begin with Satan, the spirit of the Antichrist. They won't tell you. Listen, let me tell you this. If you are in this kingdom, there is a meter on earth that watches the rising of men. There is a level where if you are rising in life, and Satan is not aware he will come to you trust me he will come to you and say I am seeing that you are doing something notable on earth and you have bypassed me what is the issue we can negotiate and it will continue most people will never tell you I don't care whether you are a man of God or you are a businessman there is a level on this earth you cannot rise to until you go through look for experience satan must come he will find a way of coming to you i shared with you years ago one night when i was praying in the spirit in the night is that true and all of a sudden i saw that my the the zinc everything just opened up and i saw a strange creature the eyes were as big as the head of a man and I saw it. The tail was another living thing. And it was fuming and looking at me. And he said, you think you can bring God's people to a place of abundance? I shared that encounter. He will come. The realm of the spirit watches the progress of men. There is, an, there is a level where if you are rising and playing around, it doesn't threaten hell. But when you get to a level, they will come. I assure you. Everybody you see who has risen without God knows what I'm telling you. They will act like they don't know it. From businessmen to investors to heads of government to presidents there are positions you can never rise until that negotiation is sealed look at solomon what happened to solomon after offering a thousand bond offerings god too came to him and said solomon let's do something only two of them knew if not that solomon told you you will just know he got up in the morning strange influence nobody rises like that is a lie there must be a visitation I want to be great in the name of Jesus. I'll be greater than Bill Gates. Get ready for look for. 
something will happen do you know why i'm saying this because some of you you'll be surprised the two of this fast while you are fasting you go to bed in the night and here comes your ancient one idol in your family that has not appeared in hundred years he comes to you and say what what is going on in this coin only how you are part of i say your your father was a rich man do you know what made him rich say i know he went to harvard he said nonsense let me tell you there was a negotiation i hear that this young man is teaching you something are you ready to agree with me and no government can stand you or will you negotiate and i frustrate you and you say satan is it not this anointing there is the god the giver of all grace access to the minds of people listen what happened in babylon when those three boys were rising the satan was uncomfortable and because he he acts out his will by men every time you start rising watch what happens to the men around you have you not seen that some of you as you are coming to this fast now those who were at peace with you have started quarreling fighting you there is something happening in the realm of the spirit you make up your mind i'm i'm going to marry right i'm going to live right and then you are walking satan does not disturb you but there is a level you are a man of god you are rising anointing you are winning souls a day will come you will have strange visitations and satan will say look you are not the only man of god rising we can negotiate this i won't disturb your assembly you will grow with wildfire but you are part of those kingdoms that he showed jesus there are people who nothing stops them on earth because the factor to stop them has negotiated with them so their life will be so easy and you will look at them and say ah what is this and satan will say likewise go and ask any rich man you know you first talk about this they will, they will turn and say don't don't disturb me they know it's not a lie whether young or old i'm not talking of 1 million 20 go and meet somebody he will tell you there is nobody that rises to certain influence without bowing to someone it has to be god or satan the power of strongholds that satan can capture your mind when he captures your mind you have bowed to him it's not by doing this that means the same way when you will your mind to god and say this is an instrument oh lord put something upon my mind put something upon my life all of a sudden an anointing comes upon your mind and my brother my sister your life will be a sign and a wonder even to you that men will look at you and say kai this thing is not normal it's true it's not normal it can't be normal you see what is going on in this ministry we will be foolish to imagine it's normal no the mystery of strongholds it says pulling down strongholds what strongholds that by, by bet satan has programmed zaria already since satan has programmed nigeria since listen satan does not go around just chasing you he's too busy to look for you there is already a programming as you are between 10 to 15 there is one that kicks off between 15 to 20 there is it kicks off till you become an old man and paul said if you want to fight warfare don't just cast spirits alone if you want to fight warfare attack the programming something has happened to you that's why the people in your village behave the same way no spirit directly appears to them everyone in your village is angry it's not just that an individual demon is running a programming happened you enter a territory and all the ladies from 13 14 15 all pregnant no matter how nice they are it's a programming and it says you are not free no that means i can cast a demon from you that demon will go but when the stronghold that mindset is there the demon still calls you home it goes through desert regions and said there are no human beings here and returns back and sits down and calls others more greater than it is and the bible says the end of that man will be worse than the beginning
so he said let this mind be in you let this mind be in you there is something satan has programmed that will never allow any that's why satan when satan does that programming he will let you go to church because he knows the kind of pastor you will meet so he's not afraid go 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 for the conference go for the convention and you can fast for 10 days and he won't disturb you pray fast he already knows what he has gotten but by the time a man of god begins to talk to you about this stronghold then you start seeing agitations he will start coming you are you are touching a nerve that matters in the spirit what is going on here who is teaching this why do you know how you have been called out of every tribe and tongue and nation not just because you are born again but that you have been given access there is an anointing that can teach you it can start teaching you something new that is not in agreement with what satan has programmed you into be and all of a sudden your life will begin to close the door for darkness to find expression jesus said satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself that means he puts something of himself in everyone so as he keeps moving around over a territory you say i see these are my people he identifies you by what he put in you but he looked at jesus he said why are you different he looked at babylon and saw everyone with it but he saw three hebrew boys he said no destroy these three boys why did they? that is is like the mark of the beast he put it in everyone so you are born you you can be educated be as educated as you want to be marry have children but that programming remains there but in this week of seven days prayer and fasting my brother my sister the mistake satan made was to allow you to be part of this program because something will de listen listen this thing i teach you is that old wine skin that god must take away the problem is not just the wine the wine skin itself cannot take what god is doing let me tell you this if satan could kill me that would be his number one assignment to kill this guy let him just die and let this thing be over when you know this about satan he will pass you like this and you will pass him i tell you the truth it's true he came to jesus did not find anything of himself and he kept waiting how do i manipulate so satan's job on earth is not just to come to individuals so is to watch over territories and governments all the captains of industries all without exception all people of influence there has been a fraternity with a spirit somewhere either the spirit of the lord god almighty or this mystery that i'm telling you luke chapter 4 is a reality that must happen before any kind of influence is established on earth he said all this have been given unto me and i will give anybody i choose did you hear satan say that so don't be surprised when a musician sings nonsense and all of a sudden two million copies sell in one month that anointing was put upon that record label he sang rubbish but you listen to it you don't even want to dance and soon you find out you are shaking your head something is wrong with you that music is doing something you don't want to listen but you put it in your phone and save it as gospel music in the night you just quietly listen and as you are listening that that reprogramming is happening again this thing is not the issue of just spirits chasing you no this is an issue of something a mindset a stronghold their job is just to supervise because they know it will always be with you it's with you while you study it's with you while you graduate the moment you become the ceo of a company satan laughs because all those 130 people in that company have through that stronghold come under his influence this is what makes him the prince of darkness that guy you see is still using his anointing go and meet satan today and tell him give me an anointing an anointing to sing or dance or do whatever agree with him the plan is going to be make sure at every point 
you find a way of capturing these people to me so he gives you influence then you give them back read revelation 13 they bow to the antichrist you see that now the who now worships the beast so satan will not come directly he will send you like a businessman who sends someone in front to be doing business for him but it's his own so this lady all of a sudden satan now says and there are other agents like that on earth so they know who is initiated so immediately they work things out for you if it's capital you need you get it fast if it's access to record labels you get it fast within one month your album is everywhere and you who is a believer i won't bow to satan but no spiritual intelligence not only will you not move they will crush you intentionally you want to become a millionaire look for welfare that's why i tell you it's not the issue of business you can do all the business you want a day will come you will get to a level that you will see people in the bank looking at you they all know themselves you travel somewhere they look at you in the plane that's why they ask you a question what do you do what do you do they are not stupid they are saying are we together are we a team and you say no i'm from another camp how did you get here how did you get here this our dull world where the devil keeps manipulating and men just look and say you mean it you are 26 and you're a billionaire didn't you go to school who rises like that look at all these guys producing garbages everything they produce must work because they have sold not just their soul but their minds have you heard of that selling your soul it's not your spirit you take your mind and say satan this is the bargain give me influence and i give you men and so he puts that anointing on you that's why when people see young people like us and see what god is doing because they know they will look at you like a suspect and say could it be that you too you have received something from those people are you seeing why the influence of jesus disturbs some people crowds followed him to the mountain everywhere and the scribe sat down and said something is wrong bro. this guy is running us out of business and so they concluded that the answer is to kill him and the bible calls it the hidden wisdom of god god planned it that way they were scheming his killing to the point that they were willing to release barabbas barabbas that was a notorious criminal they say we rather release him we can always capture his mind again but let's kill this jesus listen do you know why i'm teaching you this there is something about your life that satan is already seeing they are watching you everywhere ah, nobody has risen like this normally in your village and all of a sudden you are rising you are even fasting seven days and in your mind you believe as you are fasting you are driving all of them very soon you will begin to have encounters and the devil will come like look for and try to tell you look let me make this job easy for you i know what you are looking for is it not admission is it not greatness is it not influence is it not this we can negotiate it to you you just had a dream i had a dream and that's it and you get up anybody that stops you just dies and you think you are powerful one day the devil will remind you that i've been backing you up for 20 years it's time to give something back now and my demand is your firstborn and your wife the bible say mark the wicked something will always happen in their lives that will let you know this was not normal go and give this message to a very wealthy businessman when he leaves he will pieces the cassette and throw it away tell you this is be careful with all these young boys be very careful be careful are you listening to what i'm teaching you because we are going to pray a stronghold is not just demonic a stronghold is an information that has become a programming in your mind that makes you loyal to the sender the sender of that the, a stronghold is like a chain that holds your mind 
and so satan captures men like this that's why the greatest miracle that can happen to you is the opening of your understanding i keep telling you this the bible says then open he their understanding the miracle that needs to happen to you tonight my brother my sister is not just a miracle of healing the sick there is something that happens to your mind and that sickness will go there is something that will not happen to your mind and you may be healed tonight and by next week it has come back casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ bringing every thought look at me this is where it is this is where your poverty is this is where the suffering is this is what strengthens the causes to walk there is something that has been programmed that makes you even if a man of God says you are free all of a sudden the devil knows that he's still in your mind and he will show you one dream that takes you back he knows he's a master manipulator Satan from whence cometh thou from moving to and fro the earth doing what just going around kingdoms and seeing which kingdom belongs to me ah this one does not belong to me okay who are the kings in that kingdom and he captures them and then leaves the kingdom and goes to another one this is his work this is his work but in the next few minutes we are going to pray I don't know about you but listen this is where God brought me freedom I saw people in my lineage I saw people where I came from helpless have you not seen the way people's results are still the same regardless of vocation reg some are even pastors whatever it is still the same a stronghold but he said the weapons of our warfare he will let you do your business provided that mindset is there continue doing it he will give you access but that you want to route it another way not him you must fight a fight of warfare The governments the systems of this world listen listen you are a civil servant no problem do your thing they promote you first promotion that's all right second promotion that's all right by the time you get to the third promotion you will find out that people who should not be talking about your issue are saying come oh, it is after the third promotion they now say boy this person is Igbo but it's, it's a lie it's not Igbo anything there are people who are under the influence of that's the devil pulling that string do something this guy is not for us if you allow him rise he will recruit people because if you allow him rise he will be in a board meeting with all the executives and he will play a message and there is power in that message they will hear and when they get born again they will go back to their subunits and do the same thing let me tell you something satan can lose a territory if those are both surrender to god satan can lose a territory in one week the secret to world evangelization or world dominion is not just evangelism is influence that's why when jesus was preaching every time he saw an influential man he stopped he saw the centurion he said no 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 let me go he saw zacchaeus he said zacchaeus you have influence you are a tax collector you are the head of cbn come down i'm going to your house because by visiting you that something will happen to that territory listen satan does not walk the way we think he is that he pursues you as an individual he doesn't have that time do you know what it takes for satan to zoom his attention on you no he just puts little demons around to just supervise what he has done when you are about deviating here they just coordinate you one sickness one headache just to bring you back like a buffer solution but satan himself he's on earth satan is on earth my question is who now is in his mind that's the person you should respect who now is giving satan sleeplessness when satan comes to zaria if he's to talk to one person who will it be who is satan so threatened my assignment is to make you that person that there is something about your understanding that the moment you go home in two weeks everyone who is not saved is saved doors are opened and they say what is all this 
we believe in bowing down to a shrine but you came to this house and favor started coming listen this is what happened when god wanted to lift joseph all the diviners had a formula for getting answers and god shot the heaven and said joseph go the people were surprised the king was disappointed you are my wise men you are my sorcerers and you could not interpret my dream and the lord brought joseph and they were watching ready to laugh like janice and jambes that's why they were surprised moses where did you come from who taught you how to turn a rod he said i met with another man i, I had an encounter the anointed cherub that covereth like an eagle spread her wings he covers businesses he covers great men he covers husbands he covers wives he covers families and says nobody comes within this circumference without making allegiance to me so paul says when you are about to fight warfare don't just focus on that spirit trying to find out what is the name of the spirit the spirit too is on assignment the real thing to conquer is the programming is someone ready to pray tonight open your mouth and begin to bless in tongues Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome You overcome Say Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome One more time You overcome Every high thing must come down. Every song oh, shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. For the last time now. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every song oh, shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Hold somebody's hands. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every handwriting, every, handwriting, every, ordinance, every ordinance, every programming, every programming over, my lineage, over my lineage, over my territory, over my, territory, over my, mind, over my mind. I command you, I command be, you. be destroyed now. Open your mouth and pray. <laughs>
Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says there is a kind of programming that can make the word of God of none effect. In other words, even if you prophesy to those people in the name of Jesus, let your life change that that programming can fight the potency. It's true. I like you to pray and say every mindset. Say it again. Every mindset. Every mindset. That was in my father. That was in my father. That was in my mother. That was in my mother. That was responsible. That was responsible for their low life. For their low life. For their defeat. For their defeat. And it's in me now. It's in me now. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood I come against you. about this anointing you know why the bible says i will multiply them they will not be few i will glorify them listen there is an anointing that if god puts on your mind that idea must expand no that's how it works there is an anointing that if god puts on your ministry it will bring people under loyalty to the vision that god has given you listen you are a businessman Without this anointing, your products will not go far. I tell you this. I like you to say in the name of Jesus. In the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. The anointing. The, the anointing, anointing. That brings influence. That, that brings influence. influence. The anointing. The, the anointing. anointing. For performance. For, for performance. performance. The anointing. The anointing. For expansion. For expansion. I receive it now. I receive it now. Receive it it now. Your voice and <laughs> Pero te que tú, 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 p
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Look at me. Look at me. What is it about a message from a ministry in Zaria that somebody will collect it in the US, in the UK, and his assignment is to make sure everybody hears it? You to think. What is it that will make a taxi driver driving and koinonia message is playing? That you go to fix your phone and without your permission, someone transfers messages. There is an anointing. Oh. There is a grace. We are going to pray this thing. No, don't be foolish. Because let me tell you this. This is why many people remain small. It's not by traveling abroad. It's by what you are carrying, having wings in the spirit. There is a grace that gives the works of your hands wings. You will be in a cave like Elijah and Naaman will come and look for you. He said, Gentiles shall come to your light and kings, you won't go to them. This anointing will draw them. Lift your voice and Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. I command by the anointing of the Spirit of God. Go with this strange anointing right now. Go and increase and multiply. I decree and declare that from tonight, the grace of God is at work in you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, I may not have time to see people and we have to close and please evacuate this place uh, at least within a few minutes. Let's tidy up everything we have to do. Praise the Lord. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost. Rest and abide with us now.